and we are live. Welcome to the Whatever Dating Talk podcast. Thank you for tuning in tonight. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. We're coming to you live from Santa Barbara, California, every Sunday and Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific. I am your host, Brian Atlas. I'm joined by my co-host, Kiki. She's a bit shy. We've got a new camera angle, by the way. A uh, few quick announcements before the show begins. This podcast is viewer-supported, heavy YouTube demonetization, so please consider donating through Streamlabs instead of uh, super chatting as YouTube takes a brutal 30% cut. So if you super chat 100, YouTube takes 30. If you donate 100, Streamlabs only takes three, just a payment processing fee. Streamlabs.com slash whatever, link is in the description. Donations and super chats, $10 and up, will be displayed in stream overlay. Donations and super chats, $50 and up, will be read and, and answered. If you want to interact nearly instantly with us and weigh in on the conversation, consider sending a TTS text-to-speech message. $99 and up triggers TTS. TTS is via Streamlabs only. See the description for all other triggers in full details. Uh, guys, please keep the Super Chats donations TTS respectful. Playful roasting is okay, but if you go too far with it, we reserve the right to not show or read it. We have channel memberships also. To become a member, hit the Join button. We have six different tiers of support. Check out all the perks. Tier one is just $5 a month. You can also gift memberships, 50 gifted for a fit check. Guys, we're also live on Twitch right now. Do me a favor. Guys, pull up another tab. Go to twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow and a prime sub if you have one. Got merch too, shop.whatever.com. Stuff you can wear to not be naked. Don't be a criminal. Get some merch. Follow us on Instagram at whatever. Any girls who want to be on the show, DM us here at whatever on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, BD underscore Atlas. I will reveal what the seven on my lapel means if we get me over 77,777 followers. Check out my nonprofit, Big Labia Matter, or BLM for short. Yep, that, <laughs> yep. Uh, if you can't catch the full shows, we have three clips channels. Links for that are in the description. Go subscribe. Also, this stream is sponsored by Jackie Art of Rome excuse me, Jackie Art of Roma Army Productions. Check out Jackie Art on all music streaming platforms. Uh, check him out. He's an up and coming music artist from Canada. I've been listening to his stuff the past couple weeks. Uh, and of course, shout out to uh, Chloe. And uh, we will uh, also mention a little later on the show. Anyways, without further ado, we're going to have the guests introduce themselves. So please tell us your name, age and occupation. Go ahead. Do we have to say the age? Yes. <laughs> Okay, my name is Helen Zad, I'm 42. Uh, my name is Helen Zad, uh, I'm 42 years old, and my occupation uh, is, I'm a business owner, I own several health healthcare companies from home health, hospice, pharmacy, compounding, commercial buildings, and just uh, created my own uh, podcast and radio app that is just a new project that I'm working. Okay, cool, very cool. Uh, my, my name is Claudia, and I'm 34 and I am a neuropsychologist and I'm also a TV personality. All right, welcome. Hi, I'm Amy, I'm 33 and I'm a human resources leader. 33 you said? Mm -hmm. And you used to be in the military, correct? Yeah, I was in the army for 16 years. Were you enlisted or officer? Uh, both. Oh, both, you started as enlisted and then mm -hmm. uh, NCO or? Well, NCO is non-commissioned officer, so it's what you are before you enlist, oh, sorry, before you go um, officer route. So okay. non-commissioned officer is the same thing as enlisted. Okay, NCO is I'm obvious, I'm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so, but then uh, you went to college and then you like became. So I joined the military when I was 17. So I yeah. did college in the military um, and then I uh, went through OCS the last few years that I was in. Right. Because in order to become a, like an officer, you need to go to college Four first, school. correct? Yeah. But you can actually do it while you're going to college too. They have ROTC for that as well. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what was your, you were in the army, correct? Yeah. Army. Okay. What was your uh, profession while you were in the army? So I had a couple, uh, 42 Alpha, which is human resources, 79 Tango, which is recruiting and retention marketing. Wait, did um, you just say HR? Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. No, uh. just kidding. Uh, okay. That's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. What rank did you rise to? Uh, 01. 01. So, yeah. Second okay. lieutenant. Okay. Very cool. Uh, anything else? Uh, I mean, I Any tours? On, Were you yeah, deployed? Yeah, I was in Afghanistan okay. uh, from 2010 to 2012, um, a few other places as well. How many how many tours did you do? Two uh, in a combat zone, yeah. Good times. Yeah. Good times, nice. Hey everyone, my name is Sai. I'm thirty something. Thir and 
30 something. 30 something, yes. Uh, I do. Okay, fashion. I'm just going to put 39. I'm putting sure. 39 down. I, I'm fine with that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. 39. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. And um, I do fashion design on the side and documentary filmmaking mainly. Okay, cool. Uh, hi, my name is. Uh, a little closer okay. to the mic, please. Hi, my name is Heidi. Um, I am 23 and I'm currently unemployed. You said 23, correct? Okay. I'm Aubrey, and I'm the publicist for Turning Point USA, and I'm 25 years old. Oh, oh, okay. I'll. F I'm gonna fix that really quick. Um, just don't keep, don't put it on that angle uh, quite yet. But uh, if everybody wants to continue on. Hi, I'm Nikki. I just turned 28, and I'm a project manager for Aerospace. My name is Brandon, I'm 25 years old, and I am a VFX artist. One sec, guys, just getting this fixed here. One second. You guys want to do a little dance while, uh, you know, do a little something? Wow, okay, all right. <laughs> Yo, guys, is that better? Is that better, sir? Is it fixed? Should be fixed. Um, let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> you guys Brandon. know me. You guys know me. <laughs> that was probably <laughs> so funny. <laughs> okay. Um, here, guys, it should be one in the chat if it's fixed. Um, we, we just got this new camera, so it's expected we had a little, it was a very minor, uh, just something in OBS I forgot to check, but one in the chat if uh, you no longer hear the echo. I'm assuming it should be fixed. All right, sweet, sweet, sweet. Thank you, thank you to the chat for apprising us of that issue. So, uh, oh, I have one note here. So, Madison, um, Madison, there's been a lot of uh, people calling you out for culturally appropriating German culture. By you wearing that World War I Imperial German pickle haba, <laughs> So Madison, uh, what do you have to uh, what do you have to say for yourself? I just wanted to say. Wait, you're um, get into the camera so they can actually. From uh, the uh, bottom of my heart, I would like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. Yeah. Damn. Bam. <laughs> okay, there you have it. And then a little bit later on in the show, um, we will be asking the panel about if you would date someone who culturally appropriated on a regular basis. So we will talk about that because it's somewhat related. Okay, so we're going to go around the table once more. Uh, what is your current relationship status? So are you single, talking stage, situationship, friends with benefits, relationship, married, polycule, sex, cult? If you're single, how long have you been single? If you're in a relationship, or well, if you're in a relationship, how long have you been in a relationship? And what's your longest relationship? Go ahead. Um, I am single at the moment. I am single at the moment. Um, I broke up on May, and it was only like almost around seven, eight months. And uh, longest relationship, 14 years. And then after that, uh, it was way more short, like one year, six months, two years. Okay. Um, were you married for the Yeah, I was year? married for 14 years. Do you have any kids or? I do. How many kids do you have? I have two kids, 21 and 19. Oh, wow, okay. Um, so you had, you had uh, your first kid when you were 18, 19? Yeah, right around there. All right, teenage pregnancy. It was like, Good no, times. I was like 21. <laughs> yeah, she's 21, and I'm 42. So not teenage pregnancy. Yeah, not the teenage She was pregnancy. 21. Oh, when you were 21. Yeah. Okay, I'm, and she's 21. The, the math system in the U.S. is not great, you know, so <laughs> I've failed. Um, but, uh, okay, so... What, the, the guy you were married to for 14 years, is that the one that you had uh, kids with? Yes. Okay, got it. Uh, what about you? Um, I'm currently single, but I am talking to someone, um, so I'm not really that active. That's why I had, um, I had my Tinge account pretty deleted. So right. um, yeah, so we'll see where it goes. 
So you're single, but you're talking to somebody. Yeah. How long have you been talking to said person? Uh, like almost a month, and it's going well, so. Okay. Yeah. Wh what would you describe the current situation? Like, would you call it a situationship would you have right now? Or? Uh, um, no. I, um, I, w I'm a person that directly talks to them and tells them that um, what their plan is, um, if they're looking for something exclusive or if I'm look what I'm looking for eventually if we feel a connection because then I don't, I don't like gray areas and, this, and I, I like to look at their emotional maturity if, they, if they're the type of person that's like, I'm not really feeling this or if he's not even open to talking to it and kind of ghosts me then it's like, you know, I don't want to waste my time but yeah, so we're, we kind of know where we are at pretty much right now and it's going well. Sure. Uh, what's your longest relationship you've ever had? 10 years. 10 years? Were yeah. you married? Um, no. It was okay. my call. It was high school sweetheart and then we went to call. I went to UCSB. So oh. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. What about you? Single, um, on and off. So not like a solid chunk of time for being single. Like, it's not, yeah. Oh, dating. you're currently in an on again, off again? No, no, no. Not like a situation yet, but just like, you know, like sometimes I date, sometimes I don't. Oh, so are you currently? No, I'm single right now. Oh, okay. You're yeah. single right now. Okay. Longest relationship? Three years. Three years. And how long have you been single? Um, just for a few months this time around. A few yeah. months? Okay. What about you? Um, single, not in a rush. Longest relationship, uh, about three years. Uh, three. Did you say how long you've been single? I did not. Oh, how long? How long? <laughs> how long have you been single? Um, I think it's about six years now. Six six years. Okay. You said you're not in a rush, but you're 39. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm just having fun with Do life. Do you want to have kids? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, no kids. Nope. Okay. Uh, so not in that much of a rush then. Yeah. Uh, do you all the time to myself for sure. Have you ever been married? Nope. Do you want to get married? I don't know yet. You don't know yet. Okay. Good, to, good times. All right. What about you? Um, I'm single. Um, I'm currently in the talking stage. Um, and my last relationship was um, 2019. Talking stage. How long has the talking stage been going on for you? Um, literally days. Literally <laughs> days. Okay. So a couple days. Uh, longest relationship? Um, one year. One year. Got it. Uh, what about you? I'm currently in a relationship, and I've been dating my current boyfriend for about five years, going on six this November. Aww. All right. Where's that ring? Where's that ring? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is he watching right now? Probably. <laughs> would, would or you... playing COD. One of the two. He's either playing Call of Duty or watching this. Or watching this. Right this. It's okay. You know. do, you want, do you want to say into one of these cameras? Do you want to say... Stop hi? playing COD and watch whatever. Come on, oh, okay. what, are you doing? what are you doing, Brian? Got him. Would it be romantic if he proposed to you in the chat? Oh, that's so cute. That's cute. Ooh, her face. What I think I that might be brilliant. You, what if I told you that he actually, actually, hold on, I'll wait for him to do it. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. did, I, did I just ruin? You? <laughs> sorry. I, okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, Rupert. I didn't mean to uh, throw, throw off your game. Uh, and is this your longest relationship? Uh, yes, this is my longest relationship. Okay. Uh, what about you? I am currently single. Um, last official relationship was about a year ago. Last guy I was consistently dating, about eight months or so. Yeah. Longest relationship was five years. Five years. And you said your most re uh, recent one was eight? Eight months, months ago. Months ago. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I'm currently single. Uh, my longest relationship was four and a half years and a we've we broke up maybe about eight months ago yeah it was me <laughs> yeah it was her <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't rec i don't know did you when you introduced Kinda, yourself a few people recognize me yes this is brandon this is miss champagne brandon champagne poppy who uh <laughs> is one of our uh very generous patrons so uh Welcome to the podcast, sir. Oh, no, Thank no, you. No, yes. I appreciate it. Brandon, what do you put when you, uh, in the Streamlabs thing, do you put your last name too? I don't want to. I mean, yeah, Brandon Mells. Oh, you put, okay, you yeah. put the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, I just wrote my full name. Okay, um, welcome, welcome. Yeah. 
All right, sweet. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna talk about, and we're gonna just talk, we, we have a lot of topics to cover. A lot of you sent some uh, pre-show information. The first thing really quick, uh, we should have hit this last show, is Ariana Grande. She, uh, she I, are they getting divorced? In any case, there was infidelity. She's with a new man. She was married for, a, what, one or two years? I don't know. Uh, we have some photos of her new partner, just to give some context here. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she was previously married to Dalton Gomez, I believe. It's like a realtor. Uh, I'm, it's pathetic that I know these things. Um, it's against your will. So this is Ariana Grande on the right there. And then that's Ethan Slater, who played SpongeBob on Broadway. Uh, let's just go through some of the more photos. Just Okay, so that's her new... Oh, I, you can't really see. Uh, that's it's fine. It's fine. Uh, or you we can just. The we get the oh, oh, there oh you go. Gosh. There you go. That's okay, right. next. Buddy. Buddy. Next. <laughs> all right. There. There's. Okay. All right. Next. Oh. Okay. All right. Is this uh, a real thing? Maybe video really quick. Yeah. They're really doing okay, this. Okay. They're really doing next this. Next time. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Ne next time. Okay. Okay. okay all right. <laughs> I okay. Yeah. Next one. Now, okay, here we have Mr. Ethan Slater with Ariana Grande, and her eyebrows are gone. I, I don't know what's going on there, but, um, and then that's Ethan Slater with his wife, and they just had a kid. Uh, I think, I don't know the timeline, but they just had a kid. It's like um, a baby. So yeah. they were both married. Ethan Slater, the, the dude, uh, He's married with with a newborn, and then Ariana Grande also married. Next one. Okay, there's the love triangle, I guess. Next, I think this is the last one. Next one. They're filming a show together. Is this? Oh, that's the wife. Okay, so in any case, um, Ariana Grande, in my opinion, a little bit of a home wrecker, a little home wrecker. Um, does anyone here have any reaction? to the infidelity on both sides. I don't like her. Do we I, know I, sure I do have a question though. Like, I, I guess maybe you're saying it cause she, it's trending uh, for her and her situation ships, but like, he's also a home wrecker. Like he's doing it too. Well, the difference is, is though, is he has a kid. But it takes two to tango. She's kind of right. It does, but... Are you saying that he's innocent in this? Sir? No, I'm not saying he's innocent. He, I'm not saying, hey, he, you know, he I mean, fucked she, up. She didn't pork herself. But it is a little, like, if you know that... I do think there's a little bit more blame that can be put on one party. Not blame in terms of the infidelity happening, but who is more... Like there's more like weight. There's, it's, it's like a much worse look, I think. Because it's one thing if like, okay, if you, be, there's degrees to it, right? Like, let's say somebody's been with someone for a week and you're the person that comes in and like, you know, interferes with the relationship. I think that's less, I still think it's not a good look, but I think that's less egregious than if you insert yourself into someone who's been married for 10 years and they have three kids, then you're really fucking up. Like not just, there's not the inf infidelity did I just infidelity component? There's the you're now breaking up a family and there's kids involved. So I think kind of same lines. I think they're both responsible, but like in reverse, like he definitely has more of a responsibility because he does have a family and he does have a newborn and he does have a wife that he was committed to, et cetera, to be a man and to not allow anything to break his relationship with his wife and to take time away from his child. I think he's got the onus of the responsibility, frankly, although she's not scot-free. I mean, she's just as guilty. I'm just saying like, it's, if you're going to, you know, say she's a homewrecker, which I'm not d confirming or denying because I don't know he is. Yeah. Let me, let me clarify. I guess what the angle I'm coming from is absolutely like he has to take into consideration. He himself has a family. I'm just saying when it comes to the impact on the other relationship. So him cheating with Ariana breaks up a one year marriage. Curtis on. Reynolds donated $100. What's Kaiser hat girl's name? She looks really innocent and cute. You should include her more in the conversation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she was she was uh, more part of it uh, 
in uh, our last show, but hey, thank you, Curtis Reynolds. The, the angle I'm coming from is the impact on the other relationship. So what he's doing by cheating with Ariana, the impact it has on Dalton Gomez, they don't have kids together. So that's kind of the angle I'm, I'm looking at it mm. from. I, I read a story that they, uh, Dalton and Ariana broke up before any of that happened. Is that true? I mean, I, I don't know if any of it's true, uh, right? No. It's all clickbait, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if what you're, I think they're both, both responsible, that's all. Okay. Yeah. I mean, even then she's done this like three times because when she was with Mac Miller, she ended up with Pete Davidson and then Pete Davidson in less than two months she was married to Dalton Gomez. Mm. So, so she has this... She does move on pretty fast. She moves on extremely That's fast. That's like a month a between relationships. Not, yeah, no, She's I'm like, not, I'm going to get married. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, I'm not saying he sh should do that, but go ahead. So I have something really quick to say. So I was talking to a colleague about this and um, one thing that, I re we, that we started discussing was the fact that she actually what did end up going to um her house when they were going and holding the baby and like having like while she was they were already cheating so to have this like in order to have the psychology to have no remorse seeing the other the wife holding the child and being able to have an affair with this man um takes a lot of almost narcissism and almost um yeah um i would call her like i i take it with a grain of salt because i have no idea i've never diagnosed her but almost like a narcopath in order to mm. have that kind of like i'm holding your child i know you and i'm also fucking oh i'm also screwing your husband at the same time and she does already have a behavior pattern where she does um um, tend to break up marriages and from that we started discussing that um, her mother she's a child of divorce there was emotional dysregulation from the beginning of a child because the divorce does impact the child and I have no idea if she got therapy she self-soothed most children don't get self-soothing so um, hold on just a sec dollars you love your podcast you talk about such great topics. I love bringing them to my friends ND having the same discussions in my life. Def some weird girls with dumb perspectives you have on the show, mom. I love when Maddie mocks you, ha ha. Uh, yo, Banana Deep, hey, thank you, man. Appreciate the TTS. Um, Maddie's not mocking me. She's just like my, uh, she just copies everything I say. She's, <laughs> she's like my mini me, but a different race and gender okay um <laughs> uh so okay continue with your point yeah. so that so i mean it's just like it seems like like she just has already something there that hasn't been doing and she just has already this behavior pattern that might continue and she doesn't have you know because she she already knows that she can take a man from oh, a wife, 100%. so yeah. that behavior, and no one stops her. She's she's a celebrity. She's the one of those people that say get yes to you're doing fine. Who cares if you dis um, destroy someone's life? So you know, it's just going to continue, and it's kind of gross. Yeah, mm -hmm. Distur it's disturbing behavior. I, I'm not gonna say gross, but yeah. But the other party, I agree, is also hit the SpongeBob guy. That's another. <laughs> no, story. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Anyone, any other thoughts from anybody on the... Are we basing this all on what we get on the news though? Like yeah. behind closed doors, mm -hmm. something else happens. Always a story there. Mm -hmm. So it's so hard to pass judgment, especially because they are in front of the camera. Well, always anyway, so we very limited perspective. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, we don't know the whole story. Who knows what actually happened, but... In any case, it does seem like uh, I suspect both their marriages are over, and I think Ariana is going to be on to the next guy pretty quick, mm -hmm. pretty quick. So I feel like he's kind of th this guy with his wife and his kid is throwing away his marriage for a short fling with Ariana Grande. Kind of sussy. You're so invested in her. What do you mean? I don't know. Why is that sussy? <laughs> I feel like, like she's single now. <laughs> yeah, you're like you're waiting or something. Uh, she's not gonna be single <laughs> for like, long. Wait, so what I do mean, you think about shit, her? <laughs> if uh, if, the if she's came. down, I'm. <laughs> I'll I'll get with Ariana. What's up? My DMs are open. But... Hey. <laughs> wait, why is it sussy? Why is that sussy? That I'm, that He's I'm asking talking. our feedback. Like, so what do we think if yeah. I start dating her? Like, what do we? <laughs> I have to say that the 
the it. man's the the head of the household. You're supposed to be protecting your family mm-hmm. from things like unwanted intruders. And sometimes you have to protect your family from yourself and mm-hmm. your selfishness. Mm-hmm. So is it really Ariana's fault? Yes. Well, I think but, it's both people. <laughs> both yeah. both For, people's fault. I feel like he had a little bit more of a responsibility to say, hey, no. I'm SpongeBob on Broadway. Please, Ariana Grande, leave my family alone. <laughs> and he didn't do that uh-huh. because he, would you? Yeah. <laughs> like, look at her. Thank you. Next. Well, yeah. speaking of thank you. Next, on to our next topic. We're going to talk about this TikTok kind of went viral recently. Mia Khalifa, if you can pull that one up, Nick. Speaking of marriage, too. All right, if you can play it for us. Oh, we're comparing stats. Baby girl doesn't know that I am Tom Brady at this game. Married at 18, divorced at 21. Second marriage. Married at 25, divorced at 28. Third engagement. Engaged at 29, ended it at 30, but I kept the ring. I'm still keeping Tom Brady on his toes. We should not be afraid to leave these men. We are not stuck with these people. Marriage is not a sanctimonious thing it is it is paperwork it's something it's 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 a commitment you make to someone but if you feel like you're not getting anything from that commitment and you're trying you gotta go you gotta go you have to go i know it's difficult to fill out paperwork and to make appointments and to do all of these things but this is your fucking life do you want to be stuck with someone period do you want to be stuck with someone Okay, we're going to go around the table. Uh, your thoughts on the video, if any, and we'll go around. Well, I kind of agree with the idea of like we are not supposed to be stuck with the idea of the marriage. And then so if it's not working, you should if one if between parties, they're not aligned together. I think definitely they should, uh, you know, move apart and get separated. But I'm not. I don't think me personally, I don't think like we should jump in and get married to someone. I think we should like definitely date them for a couple of years. And then after five years, maybe if if you really want to like spend like the rest of your life, uh, which I, I think is nonsense because we evolve, we grow, we, we are completely different people every year, every five years. And if that person wants to grow with us, welcome. Let's live this journey together. And if not, then I'll walk on this journey on my own with someone else, or with someone else. Hmm. Um, I well, I definitely think that um, um, being um, her, um, I think that she does. She's on the she's on the right track that you should not stay in a marriage if you're not happy. But I do believe her, and this is Erroneous. not bias. Erroneous. <laughs> Uh, Wait, so if you're not happy, you should just leave a marriage. Wait, I have I have a point. Okay, I'm not go ahead, done. Go ahead. Um I have a different perspective on marriage. Of course, I for me, I was raised with with really strict parents and a really stri- strict Catholic re- upbringing. So I think for me marriage is forever. That's why I'm very choosy when it comes to who I'm going to end up marrying. But um with people that have worked I this is completely just uh, I'm not I'm being an unbiased opinion just from like say data it. just say it um sex sex workers tend to have ignore their amygdala for a long time so they rush on survival mode so for them um their relationships tend to be chaotic roller coastery very fun very mm-hmm. up there so when they get into that phase where that honeymoon the adrenaline the excitement is over Mm. they know that they're gonna move on to something that need that gives them that same excitement if it starts to get slow and like kind of mediocre which is a healthy relationship once that honeymoon which that once that adrenaline is gone um you should be you know working through the marriage by spicing things up she has a million of guys that are looking after her of course she's going to divorce them and get that excitement get those butterflies again get that roller coaster feeling again so of course her marriages don't work mm. because she needs that that like adrenaline that high that stuff again because she's still living off survival mode. it's very hard for sex workers to come off um 
to feel to heal themselves sometimes and get themselves um, back into um, emotional regulation. Oh, again. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> didn't, didn't, oh. That was a mistake. Oh, but but, um, but it, it happens, and it's the same thing with sex addicts too. It's very hard to because um, their their core like pleasure has already been bonded in their brain so like it's very hard to find something else that brings them that pleasure you have to be very mentally strong and have to do the work so i think that's why her marriages have been failing and that's it that's me (laughs) i totally believe in marriage um i definitely want to get there one day and um i definitely think that uh, you should be wise about who you marry. You should take your time to make sure you're making the right decision. Because once you in- enter into that with somebody, I think it should mean something significant, and uh, you shouldn't give up so easily. Uh, but at the same time, some marriages are warranted to be separated. Well, I could see that she definitely has a pattern. So my question, it's more of a question: um, Should marriage be the ultimate goal of any commitment? I mean. It's time. We talk about relationships all the time. Maybe there are other modes of being together that does not necessitate getting married. Such as? Forever commitment. I mean, it's up to the people to define that Mm -hmm. and outside of it. I thought you were talking like polyamory or something. Mm. (laughs) Do you have experience with that? I don't. None? Nope. Okay. All right. (laughs) Um... I think she needs to have um, better discernment in choosing a partner because obviously she's treating um, these men as disposable. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's a really great point. Um, I couldn't disagree more with this video. I think that when it comes to um, the highs and lows of marriage, you know, not everything's always going to be that the butterflies and the roller coaster and things like that. I think that two people are better than one. Mm-hmm. And I believe that together you can really take on the world a lot better, as cheesy as that may sound. And for what women lack in, men make up in, and what men uh, lack in, women make up in, or, you know, vice versa. I think I might have just said the same thing twice. But you understand what I mean. Um, and I think that it's a very ignorant thing to say what she's saying. And if she's dating Tom Brady, did I hear that? She is or was? I, what? She said something about Tom Brady in the video. Right. She's yeah. If she's trying, trying to, to date Tom Brady, then Tom Brady can do a lot better and he should go back to his family because <laughs> men yes. need to be in the home. Love that for us. Okay. I, yeah, I disagree with Mia Khalifa. Um, kind of what with you said, she brought the DSM up in the DMs, <laughs> diagnosing and everything. <laughs> But nah, no, she's saying marriage is not a forever commitment. Well, it is. That's why I feel like a lot of people don't realize that. They think it's gonna be this, some, some fairy tale, mm-hmm. and it's not. Think of how you are as a person and how annoying and lazy and stupid you can be. Now you're chaining yourself to someone else who's gonna have those ups and downs. So you have to be accepting and loving enough to realize, crap, they're gonna not be perfect all the time. Neither am I, mm. but let's still agree to give ourselves the best of each other and help each other grow into lovely human beings. But yeah, it's definitely forever. Should be. Yeah, all I would say is I would not take any sort of advice from Mia Khalifa for relationships. (laughs) Why not? I don't think anybody should be taking advice from her. Um, Yeah, relationships are hard work. So at the end of the day, I think the the goal is marriage. all I gotta say is I completely disagree. I definitely really she love know what she's talking about. those like mm-hmm. couples that are like you know forty years in getting advice from them. Like how do you do it? I think those are the cutest stories of like how they made it work. They're yeah, like you have to just deal with yeah. them. Yeah, oh, they yeah. suck no, sometimes and then they like don't. That. And those are the times it's good. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna be happy with somebody twenty four seven. Yeah, no, it's for the rest of your life, like it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, given what she said, and granted, I she's been thrice divorced, and she's an ex sex worker and is very publicly out there on the internet. Uh, however, I do think there, certainly there's, what's up, Nick? Uh, I was, was, maybe she could turn her mic a little bit this way so it doesn't hide her face when she talks into it the other way. Okay. Um, I think a lot of women actually kind of agree with her to some degree though about if you're not happy in a marriage, then you should leave. Mm-hmm. But you know, when you're raising kids, I think your personal happiness takes a back seat. Amen. 
Now, obviously, I don't think that you should stay in a genuinely abusive situation. Mm. However, you're, for example, uh, when you start having kids, maybe going out to music festivals and going to the nightclub, no. maybe that takes a backseat. Maybe you cut that out entirely. Right. Maybe you previously, in a previous life or when you were younger, had fun doing those things. But now that you have kids, that I think that shit is off the table. Mm -hmm. Like your Agreed. focus should be your kids, yeah. not mm -hmm. hoeing around at a f club or bar. Or f like, no. So um, I don't think that, again, like if you're in a bad situation, you're being abused, like, yes, absolutely leave. But if like just I'm not happy, mm. I don't I don't think that's a valid reason mm. to get divorced. I, um, from what I'm hearing, it almost sounds like being a woman dep uh, depends entirely on being good with motherhood. So do we like limit being a woman to that? I know it's important. Yes. What do you mean? Because you keep saying, oh, but the kids, the kids first, the mm -hmm. kids first. What about the other aspects of being a woman? Like her happiness unto herself. If she's not fulfilled in her marriage, if she's, not, if she's empty, what is she supposed to, um, supposed to pour out into loving her kids? But is that her husband's responsibility to make her happy? Or is it it's not, that's what, exactly. It's not her husband's responsibility. It's her responsibility to look for what makes her happy. Because mm -hmm. at some point, like when you give and give, which is what I see, I come from a very traditional family, and I've seen my mom give and give, you take a pause and wonder, um, I take a pause and wonder, what could have my mom been if she wasn't, you know, focused entirely on us? There's and now we have options, too. I, okay, I take back options. I think people are kind of triggered when I say <laughs> options, right? But maybe there's more to being a woman than just purely motherhood and well I, I don't disagree with you I don't think you if you decide you do the calculus on your life and decide hey I don't want to have kids that's fine mm -hmm. and I, I like there's a lot of push I think in certain like more conservative traditional circles to be like you need to have a kid you need to have a kid you need to, you need to have a kid and I look granted I do think that there is a sentiment out there of like hey a lot of people are like w not wanting to have kids. Maybe some of those people are have been misdirected or might be confused. But I do think there are people out there who have actually just done a self-assessment of themselves and are like, maybe they're just really self-aware and they're like, yeah, I don't think I'd be a good parent. Therefore, I don't. I'm not going to have kids. Or some people are incapable of having kids. Um, so if I, I personally don't object to someone if they don't want to have kids, I think that's fine. But you know, teach their own, I guess. What do you think are valid reasons not to have kids? What are some valid reasons to not have kids? Like, I well, I mean, one. it could be a temperamental thing. If temperamentally you think you would potentially, like if you think you'd be a bad parent, that's... Well, a bad parent how? Huh? A bad parent how? Uh, hold Curtis on, let me Reynolds let this come donated in. Curtis $100. Yo, I thank remember you, a plaque I saw once. Marriage isn't finding the right person. It's becoming the right person. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of just Word. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Sounds like my next tattoo. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new live, laugh, love. I have no tattoos. <laughs> but to, so to answer your question, what, what are some reasons why someone shouldn't have kids? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you just think you wouldn't be a good parent, or if you genuinely want to, for example, you think that having children would... And there's arguments against, against what I'm about to say, but if, if you have some ideal or goal that you're trying to pursue and you think kids would be a detriment to you achieving said goal or said achievement, that could be, I think that's a valid reason to not have kids. Of course, the counter argument to that is, well, when you're 90 uh, <laughs> and you're on your deathbed or even younger, let's say, uh, you're probably not going to be remembering all those late nights that you spent at work and like those are probably not going to be the cherished moments that you think about, but um, some people are very achievement driven, so that could be a reason. And also, here's the other thing that a lot of people say, well, isn't, isn't life going to be lonely if you don't have kids? But having kids doesn't preclude you from having a lonely life either, because you could have kids and they could be, I think one fear, at least for me, for example, when it comes to having kids, what if your kid's a fuck up, like a degenerate <laughs> drug addict like you know just 
aren't you going to tell him not to do drugs? <laughs> Well, I mean, you can't. I don't can, think that's a good. I don't think that's effective in a lot of cases. Well, I mean, well, like, tell them why. Like, oh. it's going to ruin your life. You're probably going to be yeah. broke. Do you, do you think that's all? It, do you think that's all it takes to ensure that the child doesn't end no. up doing drugs? Not at all. Now, no. granted, no. I, 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 of course, think growing up in like a, a loving household and having, uh, being raised right can certainly have a very strong contri contributing factor to the way you turn out. Mm -hmm. However, I'm sure like there's people that were raised in otherwise normal households. And they still, yeah. whether they're, they, they still end up uh, straying in either, you know, crime or drugs or whatever it may be. So you just yeah. had somebody on your show recently. I, I was watching an episode and there was a girl who was like, you know, raised in like this Christian household and, you know, had great family values and the whole nine yards. And it sounds like she was a sex worker. So, you know, like it doesn't matter how amazing your parents were, how much structure you had. Sometimes it does the opposite. It makes you kind of rebel because it was so structured. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that is true. There's, yeah. I think there is certainly that. But Brian, can I make a comment about the last thing you were talking sure. about? Um, so when it comes to, you mentioned achievement. I think ultimate achievement in life would be leaving a legacy that you are proud of, not just mm. professionally, though. It would be with children. So to me, I guess my question to you, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, would be, you mentioned you didn't want to have children, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess what is the point of life to you then, if you don't want to have children, is it just to be here and have a grand old time and then it's all over? I mean, don't you want to leave some kind of a impactful legacy that will continue on for generations and generations? I would not want it if my legacy is passing on a chronic illness. So it's like, we are talking about this and it's all external. Oh, hold on just a second. Banana Deep 9 donated $100. I know too many young 21 to 23 year old moms that are clubbing, hoeing around, doing pills. It's so sad and disgusting. They care more about living their life than enjoying being the mom of their child. Baby daddies are trash too, it's a shame for the childs. Yo, Banana Deep, hey, thank you for the TTS, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely, I, I think for both men and women, there's definitely a lot of that going on. People uh, being absentee parents are just not really giving it the appropriate focus that it needs. Um, so, and let me just trigger this really quick and then we'll come back to you. Valdiv, hey, thank you for the 50, appreciate it. If you'll want a good giggle, go watch Brittany Venti's new video, Hard Trolling That Old Nerd Roll Rolo. Side note, I once saved Brian from a ravenous flock of birds. Uh, this is true, Valdiv did in fact save me from some pelicans. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, so the question is, uh, what, would, what would be my legacy? You're talking about a, yeah. an illness, like passing down yes. an illness. Do you yeah. have so, what would the purpose of your life be without leaving a legacy behind you? I would go back to just finding out who I'm supposed to be. The thing is, we focus on the external. What about going back into the individual? Like in my experience, I have, um, I have an autoimmune disease that I would not want to pass on, mm -hmm. right? So obviously having kids, that's definitely out of the picture because I don't want someone else suffering mm -hmm. like I do. So I need to have a different perspective on, on how I would enrich my life. If you don't mind me asking, what is the autoimmune? Um, it's Hashimoto's thyroiditis. That's related to thyroid, yes. right? Okay. Do you take you take medication mm -hmm. to treat yes. it? Yes. Okay. And is it it's uh, heritable, right? It is. Is it like a pretty high chance of passing it down to your kids, or either you pass it on, you kind of die giving birth. So. Oh, you can. <laughs> yes. it, it increases your risk of. Uh, mm -hmm. fate mortality is it when, uh, in childbirth it does yeah if There's you have Hashimoto's mm -hmm. I didn't know that okay um, I also think that um, personally I do want to have kids like I I'm so close to my sister she already has she's pregnant and she so I have baby fever and her nephew mm -hmm. my her, um my nephew's like my best friend like I absolutely adore him would want anything and I got super baby fever and um but I feel like as a woman, there's more than give. I, I do believe that women can leave a legacy. Like mm. you can like, um, like um, there's an orphanage in TJ that I, that, that I really, it's, it's not mine, but I asked one of my ex-boyfriends if he can get it for me because they were gonna shut it down. And um, that's a big thing for me. And also like right now, like I'm um, writing a book on domestic violence because I think domestic violence is big in my community and it's, it's going to be in Spanish. So that's something that, you know, if if God doesn't give me children for whatever reason, um, you know, I, I know that I'm going to leave something for my community because, it, um, you know, a lot of them don't believe in therapy or it wasn't big and, you know, 
it just wasn't taught to them. It was just tough it out, don't cry, uh, or go to church, and that's it, you know? And so, you know, there's other ways I believe that, you know, you can leave a legacy, you know? But definitely, I understand that some women, you know, they have that baby fever and whatever happens, happens. And there's so many women that can't have kids too, that try, that do IVF and all these other things that literally just, it's not successful. So I want to make sure that I honor those women, that you do leave a legacy, even if you can't have children. Yes, most definitely. And that's a great point. Autoimmune diseases, things of that nature, you know, unable to have children for some reason, a hundred percent. Yes. But if you are of, of able to have children, I guess that would be in my mind, the most important legacy that a woman who's able to childbear could mm-hmm. leave. Well, is your life not worth living because you have an autoimmune disease? Wait, what? Is it is, of like, course. But like, I wouldn't okay. have to. Um, wait, we were talking about motherhood, though. Yeah. So, so you're saying like you don't want to have kids. Yes, yeah, so I don't want to have kids. You don't want to pass down exactly. the disease. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't your life still worth living even with your disease? It is. That's why I'm going out of my way to enrich my own life, not having to focus on motherhood. So could it, is it our be. life? It kind of sounds like a heart issue. Just people don't want to have kids because they're, they're selfish. No, <laughs> like but I want to focus like, on me, my own story, me, 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 yeah, me. Yeah, but That's what I, it we, like. I don't think like we are here just because we are supposed to leave a, like, mm-hmm. a legacy. Like how about me today, right now, in the moment? So my, right. my life and my moment is not about what I'm passing to the future. Maybe there is no future. Maybe this is it. That's it. We're all going to die and it's the end of the world. So my life is about what is it that I'm doing today and what type of energy and vibration I'm sending out. Are you saying that women are selfish if they don't have kids? Mm-mm. Okay. I'm saying people who think a good enough reason is, oh, what well, kid's going to get in the way of me doing whatever I want to do to make myself look cool or just to live my life and not have any real responsibility. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, more I think power to them. Yeah, more power to them. That's a choice. That's a choice. I think yeah. people should have a choice. And those see, people should not have Like, kids. I want to choose to have a kid or not have a kid. Like, we can have, choose what kind of career we want to have, right? Okay. We should be able to choose what kind of lifestyle we want, what kind of marriage we want, what kind of relationship we want. Do we want to have kid or we don't want to have kid? It should be a choice. Like, like we all should have that. Okay. Just a quick question, with all due respect. So if, if you didn't have the autoimmune disease, would you want to have kids? Uh, still no. Why? Because I would focus on myself. I mean, it's I could selfish. see chat here, you know. <laughs> yeah, so. And it's easy to throw around the word selfish, but if you go a little bit and um, let's say, let's read up a little bit, like, I think it's worth it to know who you are as a person. Selfish doesn't have to be a bad thing. I know, exactly. That's my point. It's like, I applaud everyone for wanting. Oh, sorry. Oh, no underscore guy underscore in underscore Canada donated ninety nine dollars. After twenty five years, I learned the wedding is not the end of the journey, but the start. If you look at your partner and don't see your best friend, don't get married. I like that. Old guy in Canada. Yeah. Old guy in Canada. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Get um, down with that. I have a couple more points on marriage, but you wanted to continue yeah, with your point. Okay, my train of thought. Oh, not getting, not having kids, even if I didn't have yeah. an autoimmune disease. Oh, okay. Focusing on, my, on myself, well, in general, focusing on individual. Mm. As I was saying, you know, you guys, I love hearing that you want to contribute to community, right? Outwards. But I feel there is merit to getting to know who you are as a person. Finding that out first before, you know, doing a lot of external stuff. Like, how am I supposed to help my, uh, how am I supposed to help? Uh, help others if I don't know who I am exactly Mm -hmm. if I don't know what I could bring to the table but don't you think you can learn a lot about yourself by being a mother most of the mothers that I know they're they're like born again people they are like have completely found themselves I frankly do think that it is selfish of women (laughs) who are of childbearing age and are able to do so who choose not to have children I I do think that that's selfish not in your case Mm -hmm. I do completely understand where you're coming from but I, I do think it's selfish. But why I, mean, I definitely girl boss and I get it, but at the same time, like, oh, you know what? I think we were sold this lie of like, yeah, do whatever men can do. 
rise up the ranks and the corporate ladder and all that. And I'm like, well, why is everyone so unhappy? <laughs> like, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah, it creates a much bigger problem because yeah. we're facing a huge population decline that's yeah. absolutely rapidly declining. We will not continue on as a species in the way that we have known it so far if women continue to choose to just be boss babes all the time. It, yeah. it, they're not mutually exclusive. You can go mm. and have a career and then have children as well. You can do both it's things. Difficult, but you can do it. Yeah, yeah. but, but yeah. having a choice of being a boss babe, but what has anything to do with having a kid or not? Yeah, that's it's like two different that. options. That's what I mean. Yeah, you don't have to do it like, together. Let's say I'm a boss, but your personal matter, having a baby, bringing a baby to this world is completely another, like, a different aspect of your life. So totally. it has nothing to do with, like, together. I, yeah. I definitely want to say, like, I would encourage you guys to refrain from being so general about, like, all women are selfish if they don't have kids. Because there's so many reasons, selfless reasons, why women don't have kids. I was in the Army for 16 years, as an example. And so, you know, I did that for the bulk of my career. And there's so many women flying planes, diffusing bombs. You know, there's a lot of examples of why a woman would choose service or a lot of other factors over having children. So women are not just on the earth to be baby makers. Mm. Um, when, uh, there's women that can't have kids that, you know, prefer themselves, uh, you know, their, their well being, their happiness, whatever, genetic things, whatever, you know. So I think I would just encourage you to lean in there and like not generalize all women as selfish if they choose not to have kids. Yeah. I'm including both sexes, by the way, not just, not just women. Oh, yeah, either, um, either way. I but also, you have a good point saying, like you were in the army for 16 years that makes sense why you didn't have a kid but the essence of being unselfish is you dedicating yourself to this country mm -hmm. so in, it's the same idea it's not with a child but you are still giving up what you can to serve other people so actually in you the think same adding of, people to the planet is serving that's not what i said but because you said serving other people like, like so you're you're putting in your time and your effort and you are serving people and you chose to do it in the army, which is really great. Mm -hmm. Other people do that and they choose to add to society by having a child that they raise up to be like a good, helpful human being. Yeah. There's a lot of women that should have that have no business having kids too. That's like, I was gonna no bring business. That up. Of course. There's a lot of people. Why are we just saying women, yeah. guys? Huh? There's some, there's some well, men who shouldn't have kids either. No. Well, men, men cannot push out children, but I think the, the bulk, I, oh, yeah, care the for bulk, children. The bulk of the, um, the conversation has been about like, because you guys said that women are selfish if they don't have kids uh, by choice. I didn't and say that. Not women. Both genders. Okay. I think I might have said that, but yes, okay. it would. It right. would well, somebody yeah. said it. That's why, I'm, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm reacting to it, but yeah. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, I definitely think that um, by making it like an intelligent choice, she she said, I don't want to have kids. And she has a, a reason. But I think that <coughs> with some women say, I Raven don't. Hold on, just a second. $100. Personally, I wouldn't want to see people forced into having and raising children who are fully committed in doing so. We have enough messed up people in this world. We don't need to add more. I How do we fix that? that? I agree. So, How do you fix this? Yeah, I think but there's that? a deeper <laughs> rooted issue. <laughs> issue. Oh, you have like, kids? I have a 14 year old son, yeah. Okay, you have a son. Okay, got it. Oh. Okay. okay. Uh, that was a plot twist. So, Wait, you, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> plot twist. Okay. So, um, so, as I was saying, um, there's definitely some people that some women that haven't made that in, like choice where they don't that where they're not financially ready, mentally capable, or even have the empathy to be mothers, and they still have children. And then we have them. Um, when I was younger, they have as like caseworkers. We they have like you know they bring these mothers in, and it's chaos. What the, the cruelty, the negligence, the abandonment that these people do to these kids is traumatizing even to me. I don't work with children because of that reason, mm -hmm. is because I can see what these mothers do. So I think that to, in order to do that, I think that it should be more of an intelligent choice that some mothers should not have children that, because they just can't be mo proper mothers because they're, they have you know whatever mental illness mood mood disorders personality disorders or whatever and they are actually causing more thing more um harm than they're causing good good to the children and i do have some friends that you know they decided to climb the corp the corporate ladder and 
good for them. I personally do want children, and that, but that's my choice. And do I think I'm capable? Yes, I am. I'm ready for kids, and this is something that, you know that I hope it's gonna happen soon because I know how old I am now. But you know what I mean. But I definitely think late. that not all women should be mothers for sure not all women should be um, mothers because of the cruelty that they can do to these kids and it can happen in one minute and they have destroyed these children's lives and to heal from that it 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 maybe never Alvin Sam donated 99 oh thank thank you Alvin the decision to not have kids is not always a selfish (laughs) decision raising kids is extremely expensive nowadays when you include the rising costs of living it takes longer for men to be financially stable, so how can you say it's selfish? You're stupid. Yeah. Hey, Alvin Sam, much appreciated. Thank you for the uh, TTS. Thank you, man. Um, I have a take on the marriage thing. Uh, so I actually think now this is a different conversation than having kids because you can have kids with someone and not be married with them. Mm-hmm. You can have a long-term relationship. You can have a lifelong relationship with someone and not be married. Uh, I don't think men should get married. I'll um, take. Just I'll wait. Take. So just women should marry each other. How does that work? How does that work? work? Well, 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 tell me more, Brian. As <laughs> why not? Well, let's unpack that together. Well, okay. <laughs> no trauma dumping. <laughs> I I'm a man, so I'm speaking kind of on behalf of men. I don't think men should get married because of the financial ramifications of divorce. Well, that's what prenups are for. Yeah. Prenups like prenups that, constantly people? get thrown out. What about women no, who make more money than men? You also got girls saying like... How about when the yeah. man comes after you? There's a lot women. of women that make more money than I men. I know lots of women that I they are financially responsible to pay the man. You know a lot of women that are paying? Yes, well, it is, it is changing a little I, bit. I have done that myself. Congrats. Okay. How much do you pay? You, you said... You, hold on. Let, let's, let's talk about your situation. You were married for 14 years, correct? Yes. Uh, I did not work when I was married. Oh. Zero. And Wait, then two years that. after my divorce, he opened a case for child support. Based. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, because um, I kind of have a, like an interesting life story, and w- over like within a year, I became like uh, over a year, like I had companies that they were making multi million dollars. And then when he found out that I'm making money, he came after me. He opened the case, and then equality. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, wait. So okay. Uh, hold on. So but don't be generalized. You were. How long are you still paying alimony? No. After they were 18 Nick, years old, I faster. after they were 18 years old, I stopped. Oh, after the kids. The kids were 18. Well, that's child support. But child support. Alimony? No, no, no. I only pay child support. You didn't pay alimony. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay. Even though you were married for, were you married in California? Yes. He, did he attempt to go for alimony? Uh, I can't remember. What's the time limit to be married for alimony? Well, the, the she was married a long time, but 14 I years? was married a very long time, and I never worked in that 14 years. I worked after my divorce. Okay, interesting. Oh, I, yeah, I'm sure it's complicated by that. But, yes. So, but you were paying him child support. Yes. How much were you paying in child support? 70000 a year. Okay. Wow. Why didn't he go for alimony? I mean, okay, maybe, maybe he <laughs> no, wasn't able to. No, because I did everything in order not to pay him. Ah, okay, yeah. there you go, there you yeah, go. Yeah, okay, good for well, you. Well, I, well, I will say this. While, there, while it is certainly the case that some women will pay men child support or alimony, my understanding is that 90% of child support payments go from men to women, and 97% of alimony payments go from men to women. So um, I suppose if you're a woman and you're making a shit ton of money, to be fair, in the court system, there is a bias against men. However, like you will, if you're the breadwinner as a woman, you might be, you're still gonna, if your husband wants to, he can go after you for alimony and child support if they were children. Uh, but in any case, if you're a man and you're the bre- breadwinner, which is still the majority of relationships, uh, I don't recommend it for men. So I don't think men should get married. Hmm. Brian, what's your vetting process for dating people? What do you mean? What's your what's your like? How do you uh, how do you you determine? Taken, engaged. What's your deal? Well, actually, I kind of want to shoot my shot. So um, Ariana Grande. (laughs) Ariana Grande. Let's pull her back up. So so (laughs) actually, um, Cy, right? Yes. I have mild hypothyroidism, so if you really want to fuck up our kids, maybe we can <laughs> just, uh, just saying. Just saying. That's perfect. Yeah, that's a perfect combo. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, good times, but. Uh, what, what was the question? <laughs> uh, I was just asking your dating status. You didn't share yours. 
Oh, uh, as a man of God, I do not reveal my mm. Are you a man of God? Okay. All right. Well, that sets the tone for the rest of what I'm going to say on this show. Uh-huh. There you go. There you go. But uh, no, when it comes to marriage, what, what was your question over here? My question was, how do you vet people to date and pursue a relationship? Because wouldn't you be able to catch like, oh, she's just after me for my money. She doesn't actually take an interest in me. But okay, here's the thing more than 50% of marriages end in divorce. So do you think that of all the people that get married, do you think going into marriage, they're thinking, yeah, I'm probably gonna get divorced within three years. Look at Mia Khalifa, she thought that. (laughs) Yeah, but like how many people who get married, they're on their wedding day, Mm -hmm. they probably think, yeah, this is it. This is the one, this is for life. And then one year, two year, three years go by, things change, who knows what the finances can change. That's a big reason for divorce is financials. most people, when they get married, probably aren't anticipating that they're going to get divorced. So how many people are in that position of thinking, I've properly vetted this person, they're, I'm in love, they're amazing, and then they're divorced? Yeah. Even religious people. Yes. I was, I was religious, and mm. like, I had no desire to be divorced because I just want to be a good kid for my mom and dad, society and family and everyone. And then I realized I'm completely sacrificing myself and mm. completely creating another identity for someone else. So then right. I decided to walk out. Yeah, well, I, well, I think one thing, um, and I, I've, I've written this down, so, and maybe some of you might agree with this, men marry women with the hope they will never change, Women marry uh-huh. men with the yeah. hope they will change. That is so in, yeah. That's definitely true. true. Yeah, that's very true. true. Invariably, yeah. they are both disappointed. Yes. Um, so, you know, in the that. military, eighty percent of people get divorced. But what I do want to well, say, but, but when it comes to the military, there's some there's certain financial benefits. Well, that's what I was going to yeah, say. So, th- like, when, you, when you're talking about your data that you just presented, like fifty percent of marriages end in divorce. There's a few things I just want you to consider that skew the data. So, uh, there's financial incentives in the military. So, or even like living arrangements. So, if you live on base and you're married, you have the option to live off base, which is preferable for a yeah. number of reasons. So, people do that. But then you also get paid more money if you're married because you have a dependent now on your record so the army gives you or all the military services give you more money so people quickly get divorced but it's an incentivized thing to do that then the other thing is religious so like mormons is an example they can't date they can't have sex without getting married so they get married so they are in the eyes of god okay to have sex and that's true of a lot of religions and so in order to break up with that person and get a new partner they have to get a divorce so there's a lot of things skewing true actual marriage uh that you you should just definitely consider in that you mentioned the religious thing, though. I, I, I would say, though, that if you were to compare that cohort of people who mm-hmm. are very religious and they didn't have sex prior to getting married, and the stats are way lower. Like I would, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure the divorce rate amongst people who are, have a either a very low uh, prior uh, sexual partners prior to marriage or who are virgins mm. is very very low compared to the general population. It mm-hmm. is. Um, yes, it is. So. It's plausible that there's rate. there's religious people out there who are getting married because they so desperately want to have sex, and then they're just going to get divorced to have a new yeah. part. But I mean, that has to be a very small proportion of that's not the of re- people who are religious who are getting divorced. I mean, I knew a lot. Like my my mother, my family was Mormon when I was growing up, and it was like every every couple I could think of when I was growing up that was Mormon was doing that. Yeah. Well, they like, were getting divorced. Yeah, to, to switch really? partners. Yeah, because like as because really? like as early as 17, 16, 17, they were getting married, so they could have sex as a you know with their partner, yeah. uh, or their families were like forcing like you know pushing mm-hmm. them to get married so yeah. that it, there any kind of contact relationship wise is approved you know by mm-hmm. the religion standards. But you know as we do when we date, we shop around partners like yeah. to see who we truly jive with, and so it's kind of an unfortunate scenario where they're kind of backed into this quarter of having to get a divorce just to switch relationships. Well, so. I mean the other thing though is that you mentioned that well there are women now who are paying child support and alimony but even I actually saw a statistic that said women who are high earners who earn more than their partner they're more likely to divorce their partner Hmm. so my position changes so I had money after my divorce so but that makes it hard for me to date men right now because you're successful and yes it it makes it very very like complicated yeah but like for me, for example, as someone who's successful and high earner, like the prospect of marrying a woman and then losing half my shit is not particularly appealing. Mm. And 
I mean, there's there's a whole there's custody disputes. I mean, my encouragement to both men and women is go to your local courthouse wherever you live. Go find the family when there there's a uh, family proceedings or divorce proceedings, and just sit and watch the case. <laughs> that shit is so depressing. Like it is the and especially custody disputes are it is. brutal. It is. It's Four one years in court. E, yeah, even the ones even the ones where there's no children involved, it's still so contentious. But when there's kids involved, then you're risking getting when kids get involved, then there's a there's a likelihood, well not a likelihood, there's a there's definitely a lot of reports of false accusations being levied against men of mm -hmm all sorts of things in, or, in an effort to leverage uh, those false accusations to get a better outcome when it comes to getting custody of children. So, um, and there's a bias in the court system against men, so I don't think men should get married for those reasons. Now, if we were to do away with alimony and child, well, ch I don't think we should do away with child support, but I do think there should be a just a, bl a limit on child support. Mm -hmm. There's there's no reason that you should anyone, even if you're very wealthy, you should be paying ten thousand dollars a month in child support. That I can That's get behind. Crazy. That I agree it's, with because like yeah, I yeah. like this whole case with uh, Kevin Costner, his wife getting like oh, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month. Like, what do you need that for? Like, uh, yeah. you know, like go buy a house. You can get one in a gated community anywhere in the country and not need one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month. Like, that's like yeah. crazy. Here, I agree. Yeah, and here's the other thing that I think they should do. Um, in the same way with uh, like food stamp programs, like they give you a credit card, CalFresh, it's different in different states. Um, food benefits from the government. They give you a card, you can only purchase food with, with that card food that they give yes. you. Mm -hmm. I think it should be the same with, if, with child support. You should yeah. only be able to purchase child-related uh, ex I just want expenses. to add that women who want a huge and expensive wedding, 40K and up for reference, they are usually so selfish and entitled that they just disregard their partner's decisions if the woman does not get what she wants. Oh yeah, definitely. If you're going to get married, like fifty bucks. That's that's my budget. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> I, will, I will say that the whole wedding industry is like kind of feeding off it. They're oh, driving yeah. that up. They're like a wedding dress just to get a basic wedding. Like yeah. as soon as people vendors hear the word wedding, their price is double, triple, yeah. quadruple, and right. it's like you just have to almost lie about like what the mm -hmm. event. It's a bar mitzvah, and then it's like cheaper. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's a bar mitzvah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's catered to women. You know, so it's like it's a woman's day. I have to say, yeah, weddings. I. I can't see. It's fiscally irresponsible in my mind. Yeah. So say forty thousand dollars. That's a down payment on a house. Yeah, I do love the Maybe idea that's of eloping, but I'd rather go to Bali like for like two eloping. months or something. Yeah, let's go. Let's go to Bora Bora. Here, real quick, how much would you? We'll go around the table on this for those of you who, if you want to play along. But for those of you who want to get married, um, how much do you think your partner should spend on the wedding ring? When proposing, um, no. I I truly don't care about yes. how much, okay. uh, because I live the life with lots of <laughs> up and down. So like, you know, what I'm wearing is not going to value. Is this, like, uh huh? No, like, like, a, like I this, truly. This is like from Amazon. It's like twenty bucks. <laughs> like, would that do it? You think? No, the the thing is, I really don't care because okay. like I value my relationship yeah. so much because I live the very up and down, uh, you know, lifestyle. Sure. So my deep connection, my like who I'm with, and it's, if it's loyal, if it's feeding my soul, if it's like you know, creating uh, meaning to my life is my priority. I, I don't care about huh. the ring. Okay, so, what about you? How much should part potential partner spend on a ring? I'm the same, I, kind of like what she said, I am the same exact way. I, um, I've already lived, a, I've had boyfriends with high net worth and very low net, like literally like college so i've seen both sides so i'm not i really don't care now like i'm not phased so by okay it. your boyfriend proposes to you with a 20 a 20 dollar ring from amazon you you're fine with it i am yeah okay all right hey, good can for i you. ask something so hold on let, well okay. before you do that let's let everybody okay. answer go ahead so I uh, love the plastic, like, I forgot they're called, but they're like, they're really uh, friendly for like weightlifters mm. and people who are in the military. Oh, the arms yeah, they're like yeah. a plastic yeah. band. Like I would be happy with that, oh, honestly. Okay. Like I'm more, more invested in my relationship being quality sure. than the ring being quality. I, not on the price, You're but not, more on the creativity. Yeah. Like, 
Mm. Why mm. would if somebody could make something, then yeah, that's good. If it's like a tattoo, maybe by someone who's like legendary from a certain tribe. Why not? Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, I feel cool. like if it's a twenty dollar Amazon ring, I feel like that directly speaks about how like he feels about you. Mm. I feel like if he really loved you, he would try a little harder. Bear, okay, so bare minimum, how much should he spend on the ring? A um, couple thousand, I would say. A couple thousand on the ring? Yeah. What, five thousand? Um, three thousand. Three thousand, five thousand. I know. You wouldn't object? What, what about like twenty thousand? I mean, I wouldn't object, but that's the kind more. of a lot. So. But like, keep in mind, you're about to become, you're, you're about to marry this person. Um, your finances are going to be enmeshed together. Mm. So that is twenty thousand that is coming out of what could potentially be spent on something a bit more literally anything you, else you, with a bit more utility <laughs> but in any case that's fine what about you um i would say i i do agree with what you've said i would like to see some effort couple you know thousand. a couple grand yeah couple, okay nothing right. crazy I'm gonna come out and say it. 100k. I'm totally kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Yeah. No, I'm 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 kidding, girl. I was kidding. No, I was kidding. No, honestly, um, I think the effort. Stop it. Is get some help. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> just a joke. Just a joke. I'm about to get roasted like a marshmallow in the comments. What, what's, um, what's the number? Uh, I would say it's a reflection of how much he is investing in me. Probably, we probably should talk about like future plans. Like, are we buying a house? Yeah. What do we want to spend that? I think talking about it would be great, but the ring itself doesn't matter that much. Like the dollar value, I. Okay. It's also really tacky to talk about prices. Like, people would be like, "Oh, this is a hundred k ring." Okay, that's really weird that you sure. said that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's like wasting a hundred k on something that you could buy a house or mm. go on a honeymoon. I don't think spending like fifty grand on a ring is smart. I think it's really dumb, but also don't spend like five dollars on a ring. Mm. Yeah. So. Five mm -hmm. to ten, I would say. Was it supposed to be like three months' salary or something? That's that was exactly. a marketing. That's that's that was a yeah. marketing what campaign. Is, that was a De Beers marketing like campaign. Fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, like that was a marketing. De Beers right. marketing right. campaign. Yeah. 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 And like even diamonds. Twenty bucks. Yeah. It 20 bucks. depends to what Max. agreement you guys have right. together and I want, what I want is my your girl, financial status. Yeah, I want my girl to know that I care. Yeah. But I'm also like not that much. Yeah. All right. Like. You know, we're gonna buy a house and stuff. So. Well, wasn't like the diamond industry like just marketed so people will spend to more beers. money? Like, yeah. is it really it's how that became thing. a symbol of love? Yeah, I think we got tricked thing. in that too. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah you buy know, this really expensive rock because it means you love her, and if you don't, mm. you don't love her. I have this really close couple friend who uh, have been together for like 25 years and she has the same ring from when they were both broke and they're billionaires now and yeah, she still has the upgrade? same old ring should she's you? The no I think I she I think it's so cute that she is like it's like yeah yeah it's the same, same ring it. from when they were broke really yeah I love yeah. it yeah so I think um one thing that I want to say is that like I feel like no matter sometimes like when they show how much they invest in you just from like experience I did have someone who was I'm not gonna say how much, but um, he would invest a lot into me, but I think that was one of my unhappiest relationships I was ever in. So like now I just feel like sometimes what how much money he invests in you doesn't equal um, how much they um, respect you or how much they love you. Um, take this with a grain of salt, but that's, to me just like an experience like just from an experience i think it's more of like the sentimental values mm -hmm. that they put how much they listen to you or um how much they know about you and how much they put like if they know that you like a, a certain like pillow like the pillow or the cushion i'm or sorry the i gotta move this on okay um, we have but yeah banana deep hey thank you man sorry not sorry i hate adult content especially nowadays with children having easy access to it all my fy for you page on any social media is half naked girls sexualizing themselves that's why i deleted all social media no no matter what followed it's all naked girls okay i mean definitely the algorithms on all these platforms <laughs> are definitely gonna start pushing that shit so uh it's what keeps the eyeballs on the apps thank you banana we have doc Venablis here one sec marriage is not necessarily about happiness first it serves the benefit of the children Second, helps you find meaning and personal growth. White coat, you will end up with multiple divorces and lots of cats. Oh my God. Who, you, 
Yeah, do you have a response to Doc Venables here? Yeah, I'm not looking. F uh, I'm not looking to be married again. She's gonna uh, cry into her dollar bills. Yeah. <laughs> She'll wipe weird tears. Yeah. Well, and cats are great for the record. No, I, so. I love cats, and I'm perfectly <laughs> fine. Actually, I'm very content if I don't meet someone that I'm aligned with. I can live mm -hmm. on my own. I have a beautiful life, mm -hmm. and then um, I'm perfectly fine if I have to stay alone. Into the mic, please. I'm perfectly fine if I stay all alone. Okay. Um, we have. Let me do. Oh. Another reminder, this stream is sponsored by... Oh, hold on. <laughs> you donated $99. Bless up whatever podcast. Ching Wing in the back, cute. Oh Ladies, God. how many of you follow Brian's BLM movement? <laughs> you have BLM. Awkward. Oh. Big, big oh. labia matter. <laughs> how, how, many, how many of you follow my <laughs> non-profit organization? Um, I did see the Instagram. Guys, can we not... Can we not do the, the I, I don't want to Streisand affect it, but can we not say semi-racist things, please? Thank you, guys. Um, okay. Like, look out for me, too, because it's just not a, it's optics. It's not a fucking good look for the podcast, guys. Okay. Um, this stream is sponsored by Jackie Art of Roma Army Productions. Check out Jackie Art on all music streaming platforms. Like I said, check him out. Up and coming artist from Canada. Shout out to Chloe. Okay, uh, last thing on the marriage thing here. So look, my whole thing when it comes to marriage is you do not sign a contract with someone who is rewarded for breaking it. And in today's day and age, women are rewarded financially for breaking the marriage contract. So n no sane informed man ought to, should, would, could, whatever, sign that contract in my opinion. You know that uh, singer Kelly, uh, like she's like, uh, I forget her last name. Uh, she was on like American Idol. Kelly, Kelly Clarkson? Clarkson? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Her husband <laughs> was basically a nobody. He's bankrolling off of her. And he broke it. Based. Why do you say that? Because what, it's that the he's man getting, getting out of Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's... And it's, her, like, ranch or yeah. something. Like, it, that's messed up if you see that story. Oh, Wait, what yeah. happened? Yeah, I think it has nothing well, to do he, with men I think woman, he filed you know? for divorce. Oh, and he's hold like... On, just, Loose Pussy oh, Energy God. donated $99. <laughs> These 304s got some nerve. Stop the damn cap. You know Yao will leave your simps on the same day if they didn't spend serious cash on that ring slash wedding. The name fits. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. Oh my God. <laughs> LPE, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Better be fast. Appreciate it. Um, Oh, okay. I thought somebody had something to say. Oh, no, we're, we were just talking about Kelly Clarkson, how she's getting worked by her ex-husband. Shout out, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's good. So it's okay right. when men do it. Yeah. yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's, it's about fun. time. He got, like, a farm in Montana. Like, I mean, as long as you're a man doing it. Yeah, it's just kind of like, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is what you wanted. These are oh the alimony gosh. laws. Although, <laughs> I, I don't know, that's not a good argument. Uh -huh. But, uh, okay, so hold on. I, I wanted to come back to you. You said you've been single for six years, correct? Yes. You do, you, you do adult content, is that correct? I don't. What do you, like adult uh, content? I well, do like, cosplay. Spicy cosplay. But do you Spicy have like cosplay. an exclusive site? No, I don't. You don't? I have, a, okay, define it. Do you find exclusive site like are Fansly? Are you either on Fansly or OF or? I have Fansly, I okay. do, but I don't do nudes. Um, I'm mostly on cosplay. So there's no zero. Zero. Oh okay. Oh Why wow. Don't you okay. Sub? Wow. Look, guys, this is this is <laughs> the <laughs> a panel where we don't have. I don't think any no girl here does OF. That is. I don't think we've had a panel in a long time where there wasn't at least one girl who did some, some kind of adult kind of content. So that is fantastic. Okay. Wait, why was the question directed just at me though? He's oh, trying well, to have a kid with you. What, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, that was really random. Whoa. I'm trying to not have kids with her so we can not have super <laughs> kids with super fucked up thyroids. Um, don't worry, I got, mine's kind of, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> it'd be mostly your fault though, just saying. If we, mostly. Yeah. Is, that, is it insensitive that I'm joking about your, my what? Hashimoto's? My what? You have thick what, huh? Yeah, go on. <laughs> is it is it insensitive? You're making it awkward. Like, let's move on to the next one. No, but is it insensitive? It's not. I, I don't, don't feel it. It's, it's yeah, my you reality. Got thick, you got it's my thick reality. Skin. You got thick skin. Okay. All right. So, 
Some of you very kindly provided some pre-show notes to us, so we're gonna do a little deep dive. Uh, Helen, <laughs> you, in your, actually, hold on, I'm gonna save that for later. I'll come back, I'll come back to you, okay. Helen. Um, let's see, we have, we have Nikki here. I'm from LA, and the women here might benefit from hearing a perspective that doesn't glorify OnlyFans Instagram clugging. Clugging, clubbing. <laughs> excuse me. Um, did you? What did you specifically want to speak about on that? Oh, <laughs> interrupted. Graffiti donated ninety nine dollars. Hi, G H Valu man here. Feels cringe to type that. I disagree on cheap rings. Takes an ordinary woman and elevates her to the status of the man she is able to retain. As my income grows, my wife's ring gets replaced. Gold and diamonds are investments. I disagree on cheap rings. Takes an ordinary woman and elevates her to the stance of the man. She's okay. I mean, right. I, I don't that. think anyone's disagreeing with that, but we're yeah. just saying yeah. like, what's the bare minimum that we'll accept? Yeah. But I mean, if you're yeah. gifting me a yeah. big fancy ring, I'm not going to say no. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like, you know, a lot of you said, eh, I don't really care. $20 ring, mm. fine. Yeah. <laughs> but it would there's not you don't you don't think there's some part of you that would feel it would be a detriment if he didn't spend a certain amount on a ring well if he had the money he was just if choosing not money. to and which is like hey actually you don't deserve anything cooler yeah. than that like had, what's his what's his attitude no even if it? he has the money but he's like this is a waste this is some propaganda from the fucking mm. diamond industry <laughs> Dang, that it, it's that. like <laughs> some some ridiculous it's a psyop for us to spend money on yeah. some diamonds the cost of diamonds are overinflated. There, there's an abundance of diamonds. They're not particularly rare, blah, blah, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, what if it's just like, yeah, this is a scam. I'm not gonna spend $5,000 on this when yeah. this probably costs like two bucks. Yeah, I, like somebody, uh, I think in the chat had said like, what if I made it? Like, would you love that? And I, hell yeah. yeah, like some kind of like sentimental value or maybe you have an inside joke with your partner. Like my sister literally just got married this last weekend and um, the engagement ring uh, was like a black stone that was really special to my sister. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's gonna wear forever, so. But a lot of you said in. you wouldn't care. And I guess my next, sem I don't know how long I wanna linger on this particular topic, but. If the guy didn't pay for the first date, would you have an issue with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would. Here, let's go around the table really quick. We'll touch on it. Um, if it doesn't pay for the first date, it depends. Like, he wants to split the bill. So it's not, you're not paying for him, he just wants to split. Deal breaker, you have an issue with it. No second date. No second date. <laughs> no second date? What no about you? Date. Yes, I believe that a man should pay for like the first date. And I think that he should. I, yeah. I really like the traditional like first date. He opens the door and he's a gentleman. Yeah. I think that, that that's what I place value in. And him being a gentleman and him paying for the first date. But if he were to ask me to split, I would split. But yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's definitely... Uh, appreciate it if the man pays for the first date however if i don't like them i offer to split because yes. and i will split because <laughs> yes. i would yes. feel bad like using them which i'd never use yes. anyone for anything but like i would feel obligated because I, I don't like you i'm not going to see you yeah. again i'm going to pay myself yeah me too i would prefer to split and honestly it depends on the conversation like dinner is about conversation um i mean if he asked me on the day and he told me um to split i'd probably take that as an insult and I would just probably like pay the whole thing and never see him again. So if the guy asks, he should pay? Huh? Yeah. The, if the guy asks, he should uh, pay. Yes. Does ever I think most of you would agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but okay. I'll come. Oh, okay. Um have you ever asked a guy out on a date? Uh no. Interesting how that works. Okay, what about you? <laughs> um, it wouldn't necessarily be a deal breaker for me if he didn't pay for the first date, but I, I would prefer that to happen, yes. I prefer if the guy pays. Okay, mm -hmm. what about you? I'm looking to be a traditional woman, and I want my man to be traditional as well. So no, no, okay. splitting, the, no splitting the bill. Okay. Well, you currently have a boyfriend, correct? Five, five years? I do, yes. Do you guys live together? We do. Yes. Do you split the bills or do We sure work? do, right down the middle. 50-50? Yes. And then when it comes to like dates, you all... 
does he pay or it's kind of 50 50 there like he gets one you get one type of thing um yeah sometimes we do do that you know i'll cover coffee one day he'll cover dinner the next something like that mm -hmm. um but most often we do split things 50 50. um we are in an interesting situation i work he's currently still going to school to be a pilot so it just works a little different he's not currently making money right now in the way that i am mm -hmm. okay all right yeah i'm an old school romantic so i definitely would pay on the first date I mean, if the girl asked me out, maybe not. Mm -hmm. But even then, I'm still like, yeah, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. So. I think you should split. The first day? <laughs> 100%. Split. Brian, I'm starting to think you're cheap. You kind of want to pay for napping. You kind of don't even know if you like each other yet, though, on the first date. I kind of get where Brian's coming from. Hold on, I do. Raven DT donated $100. Best way to weed out a woman who thinks her time is worth more than yours, first date, separate checks. If she still wants to see you for another date, man pays for second date. Third date, she pays for it. Yeah, that, that's that's yeah. a thing you could do. Um, yo, Raven, thank you, man. Really appreciate the TTS. Um, definitely agree, though. First date, absolutely. Separate checks. He does have a very good point, though. Thank you, Raven. Of if it can be a way to screen out low interest women mm. like if you don't pay for the first obviously you you don't expect her to pay for you you pay for your meal she pays for hers it is a way to screen out women who have a low interest in you because mm -hmm. if she, even maybe her standard is she does want a guy to pay for the first date but if she's so interested in you that she's going to be like i still want to see him even though, even though he kind of, I, here's my standard but i still want to see him mm. That's a very high interest woman mm -hmm. in, in terms of her interest in you. So I think it's actually a good way to screen out uh, women who have like low interest. So mm -hmm. I um, like too. I think we should lower oh, our standards. You were, you were saying? Uh, I was just going to say, I think, a, I think oh, women put a lot of effort a, into first dates. We and have it's very a expensive. bird in here. <laughs> Oh, it's, oh, a wait, hummingbird. Hummingbird. It's, a, it's like a That's hummingbird cute. or something. We have, <laughs> all right. We have a hummingbird <laughs> in the so each. <laughs> Me too. Huge. Uh, just. Uh, Nick, open up the door a little more and then birds aren't real. OP it out. flies out. All right. What's the bird's name? Jeffrey. Hopefully the bird doesn't hit one of the lights because if it does, oh it's going to get fucking fried and oh we're going to be God. eating. <laughs> we're going to be eating bird well, tonight. Hitting the um, ceiling. So what were you saying? You said I was, was going to say, uh, well, I just said, I said it's just starting to sound that way because you don't want to pay for much. But um, I, yeah, no rings, no weddings. Well, no then, but, but I mean, if, if we take that argument to its log logical conclusion, then like aren't 99% of women cheap because almost no women want to do any of these things. That, well, I, I disagree with that. Um, like, you know, as an example, when, when women go on a date, the amount of effort it puts into keeping their hair nice, getting their hair done, getting their nails done, waxing, shaving, makeup. Makeup is so expensive expensive their outfit Alonious. all Alonious. of those things i mean it's expensive to get ready for a man to be pleased by what they're looking at well yeah but don't women also say that you guys wear makeup for yourselves mm -hmm. not i think for men? some yeah, women do sure. i don't agree with that so I want, which why can't is you do both? I don't agree with that. Why can't oh. you be both? Yeah. Oh, so you wear you wear makeup to be more attractive? One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate your honesty. Most women yeah. aren't prepared to cop, cop to that. I guess. But, to admit um, to it. Yeah, but. Uh, as far as the effort that goes into preparing for the first date, first off, well, actually one, I actually prefer women who wear minimal or no makeup. Mm -hmm. So I'll, maybe I'll tell a woman, eh, you don't really gotta wear any of that shit. Yeah, but that's so rare, I, I feel like, you know, I mean, I'm, no. I'm more that way. Like, you know, I, I didn't wear makeup for a very, very long time in uniform. You know, I didn't get, I sure. had to kind of learn fashion and makeup and stuff when I left, but that's a rare thing. A lot of men, especially these days, you know, really want their women to be like social media models, you know? Right. But okay, as far as it being cheap, like, it's, it's not about being cheap. It's just that we <laughs> as men, as, at least me as a, as a guy, I don't want to waste my money on someone who doesn't deserve it. And it, it's, mm. it's not about the dollar figure. It's like, what, 10 bucks for a drink, whatever. I don't care. Uh, it's more about a principle thing because I would feel bad in the same way. Like, let's say someone stole $10 from you. Mm. What's $10? It doesn't really, but mm. it, they, they've, they've slighted you. Yeah. They've done something, not, they've victimized you in a way. I'm not, yes. I'm not comparing robbery to taking a girl out, out on a date. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's not, but but it's, it's not so much about the, the point I'm trying to make is it's not so much about the actual dollar figure. It's that you've been... Mm wronged in some way and uh, let me okay 
this is not I feel like I'm digging myself a hole here how many dates were you talking because I don't think you're if a girl's not interested if a girl's not interested in you (laughs) if a girl's not interested in you I don't think you're you've been wronged because she's mm-hmm. not interested. That's not what I'm trying to say. But like, if you're on a date with a girl who perhaps has, for example, if she's on a date with you for a foodie call, mm. then I think you've been wronged. Mm. Where it's like, she has some ulter- ulterior motive for her wanting to be on the date, whether it's for food, whether mm-hmm. sometimes people will go on the first date, they'll do an experience together. Some guys will put out a lot of money on the first date to try to impress a girl, whatever it may be. Um, so for me, it's more a principal thing. Like, in, in addition to that, I would feel, I don't know if wronged is the right word, but one of the reasons I don't like to pay on the first date is the way people move, both men and women in 2023, is you have to assume going in, whether you're a man or woman, that that person you're seeing may very well be seeing multiple other people. Uh, so if I'm going on a date with a girl, it could very well be the case that she's sleeping with one, two, three other dudes. Mm-hmm. Maybe she's not sleeping with other men, but maybe she's dating other men. I've been on dates with girls and I'm talking to them. And I had one girl who's not particularly remarkable in any way. She said she had five dates scheduled that week. Oh, that's weird. I don't feel particularly special. I don't feel Man, particularly inclined that? to fall into my traditional mm-hmm. gender roles of paying mm-hmm. for the first date when you're pursuing so many other options. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, especially if you're if a woman is sleeping with another guy mm-hmm. and you're going on a date with me and then I'm going to pay for your food, you're going I've said this a couple times before. Yeah. Here's like the scenario that's just like crushing. If I pay, if I were to pay for a girl's food, let's say we go on a dinner date, which I actually don't recommend dinner dates, certainly for first dates, it's for a variety of reasons. She gets a to-go bag with her extra food. Gives me an ass out hug at the end of the day. Oh, it's nice. Good date. <laughs> Takes a little to go bag. Brings it over. You know, the date ends at 10, 9 p.m., 10 p.m. Brings it to the house of the dude who she's sleeping with, who, by the way, never paid for, took her out on the date. Gives him the food, which I paid for. Then she fucks him. Then he eats the food. That's like, that's like, uh, cuck this is oh oddly, God. is that what happened? This yeah. is oddly specific. That's like cuck territory. Did this happen yeah. to you? Did that happen to you? Yeah, this is so specific. How do you, that was very really specific. Oh. Well, I think this happens. Yeah. Is, oh. I don't know. That's what he's trying to say. I don't know if it's happened. Is that like Keep a Keep in mind, I, I avoid food dates. I've, mm. I've done occasional food dates, especially when I, I was younger. I don't go food dates. I want to run I, away if I don't like the guy as soon as possible. I go to coffee first. Yeah, coffee. And if I like it, and for the coffee, I want them to buy the coffee or the, drink or oh, yeah, something. Oh yeah, not even that. Not even and a $5 then, coffee. So, you don't pay for that shit either. No, I want them to do it the first time because I'm not no, going to no. go. So, and then I no. only go like a three dates per year. So if like he doesn't have a gesture of like paying for the first one, like I don't want to waste my time. Okay. No, I completely agree with this. I know women who have specifically gone on dating apps and continue to go on dates, number one, to get free food, and number one, to have sex that evening. 100%. Oh. Wait, have sex with the guy they're on the date with, or? To have sex with the guy they're on the date with. So yeah, the guy oh. is getting something out of it, but still, wow. I mean, that's getting into weird territory. They're not doing it to actually get into a committed relationship. They're doing it to just go on a date, girl wants to get laid, and she wants some free food, and she's never gonna see the guy again. I know people who have done that, completely. And I think that when it comes to a guy paying for the first date, I do tend to agree a little bit more with what Brian's saying. Um, And I think it really mostly comes down to the time in life that you're in. I mean, you're in college, you know, going on a date with someone. Everybody's kind of poor in college. Mm -hmm. Like, I think then it's definitely appropriate to split the bill. But I do see where the others are coming when it comes to generally. I would understand why a man would pay for a bill. Okay. So, Brian, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, So I feel like I can see the narrative that you have in your head and it makes absolute sense because I do agree with um, what she's saying that there are girls that will, you know, go out and do, you know, some terrible things, use men to get whatever their intentions are. And I completely agree with you. But there are some women that are, that have healthy intentions. Do you want to find the man of their life? And, you know, there are some men that actually want to court, you know, girls I guess court, yeah, and pay, court. you know, um, <laughs> for the first date and um, and sure. bring flowers and be, you know. So, what do you think about the the guys that you know want to pay for like, like the traditional dinner and bring them like the flowers and all that stuff, and the girls that are still out there and do have like healthy intentions and still want to meet like their husband and 
through you know these dating apps and don't have those intentions i know it's hard sure. to find that yeah well i mean all those things you listed like paying for the first date it's not going to hurt you in any way so like the i don't actually recommend men do what i do um mm -hmm. because not paying for the date could otherwise shut the door on what mm -hmm. you know um, me personally, I use it just as a screening mechanism for women who have a high interest. And then, uh, but I'm prepared to, like, I'm not pressed, like, any one date. I'm never pressed, like, oh, I really, because that's a terrible place, I think, for mostly for men, but also for women to be in. If you're, like, really hoping it works out and you're really, like, you're a little too interested, mm -hmm. I think that's typically it tends to not work out. You get right. in your head about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm very outcome independent. Like I don't, if it doesn't happen with any given person, I, I honestly don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Okay, that, yeah, that makes sense. Well, if we actually, went on that's a, date, a healthy like, thing to not yeah. get attached that early. But I, yeah. I feel like opening the door, paying for dates, gifts, flowers, all that stuff. I feel like th these are things that are reserved <laughs> for women who are worthy of them. Right. Yeah. In other you, words, you said you wouldn't even pay for an engagement ring. Huh? <laughs> you said you wouldn't even pay for an oh, engagement ring. Oh, well, that's just a, that's more from a waste of money standpoint. Mm, okay. But um, like, I, it, it's more so just until you are only seeing me, and I know this definitively, I'm mm. not gonna do the traditional court. Like, I'm not gonna be the traditional guy. That makes sense. Because a lot of people are right. seeing multiple people. I'm not gonna sit here and like spend money on a girl. Yeah. And you're fucking another dude. Like Ooh. to me, that's just. Yeah, that's not okay. You want tra you want traditional gender roles don't just go one way. You can't ex can't be fucking a bunch of dudes and then expect a guy to want to be a traditional man and court you and pay you while yeah. you're getting you're go you're fucking a bunch of other dudes. Like I'm yeah. just not gonna I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. I and I know I'm that. a bit blunt in my presentation, but again, I don't recommend men do this because you are going to. Uh, you are going to lose out on some women, but for me, it's just like a, a it's a, it's a matter of principle for it's me. A precautionary well, it's almost, measure. You almost have to do it nowadays though, because of how common this is. And then how do you filter them? Well, with exactly. who you're going and, and out? Me personally. Like, like, let's say for what, an hour or 30 minutes you talk with someone and you kind of get an idea with like how you're, you, what kind of like the filter system you're using even to go on a date with them or not. So. Like, that, that's the biggest thing I hate though too is that me personally I hate having to sit here and filter out another girl you know what I mean we hate it too like yeah <laughs> hmm. like filter out hmm. what is wrong with this girl like is not, she gonna not, do this not, not about uh, what is wrong it's like what do you have in harmony together what do you have in harmony together well, that's what do you have in that's just finding connection. common together yeah finding a connection yeah. and then you will see okay am I aligned then I'm gonna go to the date so for example if the guy tells me like a couple of red flags I'm not gonna waste my time to go on a date I'm just gonna go on a date that I feel like hmm, there's potential here so I'm interested to go right. to on a date right no, I agree with that I'll you pay know? if she has a large labia. I'll see. <laughs> okay. yeah. gonna, How are you going to know pay. that before the date? I, there's no way to know. <laughs> you there's no way to know. Gonna She's going to have to tell me. She's going to have to tell me, by the way, Brian, the, the bill's on you. I have a... So she has to bring that up herself? Like. She's going to have to, yeah, pass me a note at some point. Um, I suppose I would also pay if, um, like, if she was, like, in college. If she was, like, 20 mm -hmm. or 21. How old are you? Yeah, she's 34. Broke. You're gonna date a like an 18 year old? <laughs> well, in college, so that could be 18, 19, 20, 21. See, here's the thing. Like, okay, I, yeah, everyone, all yeah. the girls at the table yeah. are making faces. We got, you know, this is actually uh, panel wise. We have uh, I people. Young, I date young guys. Oh, there really? you go. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think dated anything from five to 10, 15 years. Okay, so. It's funny, a lot of people grimace like, oh, Brian, you would date someone who's 21 and you're 34. Uh, you yes, I would. Heaven forbid I, did a, I date a woman who's at her peak physical attractiveness. Um, Ew. But, but what do you have in common Why with is her? that ew? Because I look better than a lot of 21-year-olds. I work my ass off. Stop the cap. That's not capping. <laughs> you're, saying, you're saying that just because someone's 21 that they look... Do you, have you seen the obesity crisis in the U.S.? Heaven's getting a little chubby. But, yeah, but I don't see how that's... Okay. So you're you are 33, correct? Yeah. Do you think you're you're better looking now than you were at 23? Yeah, absolutely. 
Really? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I haven't seen photos, but like... Yeah, yeah. well, at 23, I was in the middle of Afghanistan with my head shaved, so yeah. Well, okay, Ooh. but like... Yeah. The, there are certain things that as you age for both men and women that, you know, your skin loses a bit of its uh, tautness. I, I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, you get wrinkles, you know, typically, yeah, I mean, you can start getting into better shape as you get older. However, a lot of people start gaining a little bit of weight, you know, but um, for, I think I was better looking when I was 23 or 24 than I am now at 34. I think I think men often and look better as they get older. Yeah. Well, there, I mean, there is age. something to be said that <laughs> yeah. men, in some, perhaps more so than women, can. Not all the times. And by the way, yeah. not all the times. Yeah, definitely. Not. I'll say there's a lot of great-looking 21-year-old women, and I'm not going to dispute that. But I just don't want you to generalize so much. Like, there's a lot of ama- like uh, Kim Kardashian's body is amazing yes. uh, for whoa, her age. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> she, yeah. did, she, she didn't buy that. Yeah, it's, I don't have it's not all fake. It's not all fake. It's not all fake. No, 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 no. Her, okay. Yeah, well, you're, you're, you're telling this to the wrong guy because I, I despise plastic surgery. And she's had BBL, she's had lipo, she has fake tits, she's had Lips. tons of work done. So I don't like sure. women with plastic surgery. So but I she think looks her, amazing. I mean, I no, 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 no. She's disqualified because he's not into her, that. The, 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 yeah. No, I'm sorry. Hmm. Well, I mean, right. maybe for if she's you. doing it for herself. For yeah. Plastic surgery, I don't think looks good on women. Wait, but Brian, yeah, I don't on I anybody. Don't I don't yeah, think like, there's actually, no way to, like huh? dating like an, like what do you honestly have in common with like an 18 would, year old? Yeah, like there's honestly, nothing. like there's are nothing. you just dating her because like she might have yeah. a big Alonious. I don't know. Oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> like what is your a purpose? Like yes. I Hold on. Say. I'll let this Maybe come in the then I'll donated $99 to the military lady. Lip fillers do not look I good. don't have any. No matter where you go. No lip filler. You used to though, didn't you? A long time ago, long yeah. Time it's ago. all dissolved now, but nice try. Okay. Well, first mm-hmm. off, um, let me point something out. I'm not like hanging out at college parties trying to pick up 18 year olds, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm not like, however, like if, also let me clarify, most of the women I've dated in the past couple of years have actually been around my age. Actually, I've dated women older than me in recency. So most of the women I've dated recently within a couple of years of me, uh, Dated, I dated a 45 year old uh, like a year or two ago. And then I dated, uh, I think someone, well, in any case, I've dated some women older than me. So it's like most of the women I date typically are around my age, late 20s, early 30s, whatever. Um, but would I object to dating a woman who's 21? Or as you, if you want to use the extreme example to try to, I do. Try to put me in a corner here, <laughs> uh, an 18 year old. No, I don't object to dating an 18 year old. Because um, you don't have to buy her a ring or pay for her mm-hmm. dinner? No, it's just like, I think but I think 18 to 25 don't get me wrong there's women who are in their 30s even 40s that I think are very attractive women it's not like I'm hyper focused in on like 18 to 25 year old women however don't shoot the messenger here and a vast majority of men think women between the ages of 18 to 25 are the most physically attractive well apart from the physical aspect what do you think you would have in common with someone that young. That was my though. question. Like okay, mental, sure. emotional maturity. <laughs> like emotionally. Sure. Well, do you think that commonality is the ultimate or penultimate thing that men or women care about when it comes to a, being attracted to somebody? It's not the ultimate, it, but it, it gets started. Like yeah. whatever relationship you want to build, yeah. it's always a similarity. It's probably more likely the foundation likes. than mm-hmm. physical attraction. I, I but, but, but when you say, what do you have in common with an 18 year old? What do you think in that regard I have in common with? Like, are you talking about, oh, we were, we're in the same age, age cohort, mm. therefore <coughs> we've seen the same movies? Alvin Sam donated like, I don't care about that. But, why are you shaming Brian for dating younger women when younger women prefer much older men? Mm-hmm. Younger women provide fertility that older women do not. Older women are more argumentative, mm-hmm. combative, disagreeable, and difficult to get along with. That just means they don't tolerate. <laughs> so, yeah, and it, it is interesting. Like, women, men always get shamed for their preferences, standards, and boundaries. Men are not allowed to have preferences women they can like tall men they can like xyz characteristics when it comes to men but the moment a man says well i'm attracted this is what i'm attracted to oh well that you're you're oh i don't like to date obese women oh my god you're you're so superficial or 
No, like, I agree with but that. you know, you 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 are in a first world country. You're in a very small bubble with the rest of the world. They value a woman based on how she looks. So, like in all the Middle East, in Asian country, they choose women based on uh, how her appearance, how pretty she is, or like what kind of family status she comes from. So, but in a first world country like like Eastern Europe, Europe or America, is a little bit different values. In opposite uh, culture, it's completely opposite. The women get the shame about like their choices, what they want, or what kind of lifestyle they want to choose. Like it was completely opposite for us. So, for example, when I say I want my the guy that I'm dating. I want him to be hot. They're like, oh, you're so shallow. So it's a shallow thing for me because I'm Middle Eastern and I'm coming from the culture that I'm not allowed to say that. I think okay. the other thing, Brian, too, is like, I, it's like you're kind of putting women in a rock and a hard place. Like there's no way to, to win. Like, what do you mean? You, like you're saying yeah, that. Yeah, the mark. Yeah, like 20, <laughs> 20, early 20s year old women are like the ideal, but then you shame women who get like plastic surgery and things like that that are trying to basically because there's so many men out there saying younger women are hotter, they look better, et cetera. So they're, when they try to like take care of themselves, mm -hmm. like, you know, through any kind of plastic surgery whatsoever to, to reverse the clock a little bit, then they're shamed as well. well so it's like, there's on. no women. Plastic winning. surgery doesn't make you look younger. It just makes you look weird at the age you are, in my view. Yeah, I think I plastic surgery. Do you think I'm look? I look weird. What What have you had done? Like I had fat transfer in my. Fa I had fat transfer in my face. Um, I touched my eyebrows. I I did uh, well, plastic surgery. We We need to be specific here when we say plastic surgery because there's different. Obviously, there's different kinds of procedures. Typically, the the more common things when I think of plastic surgery would be boob job. Uh, mm, yes, like breast. Okay. I have done that. So Lips. so breast implants, BBL, lipo. And lip fillers. I have those are the libo. four. Those are the four that, at least for me, absolutely not. And then also labiaplasty. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> don't he don't do that shit. I do liposuction and I do work out very very hard. But like whatever I feel like, oh, I want to upgrade this. So just like how I upgrade my phone or upgrade my lifestyle, I upgrade mm -hmm. myself too. I'm like, mm, I like it this way, so I'm gonna go do that for myself. Right. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm yeah. so sorry for interrupting. No, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I have a question too. Um, a lot with of the younger girls, mm -hmm. um, with your, and I'm not shaming you. You can date whoever, but um, with the, the with that age range, it girls tend to be a little bit um, tend to be more naive. They can be easily controlled. They can be more easily manipulated, impressed. Mm. They and they can. They're easily impressed when I hear them. When I talk to them and I hear them talk about what their boyfriends do for them, I'm like. Oh my God! Wow! Like I remember being that young and being like so. <laughs> is that a reason why you also like to date young? Besides being highly attra sexually attractive, they are. They are. I could never compete with a eighteen-year-old. I definitely know that. But it's also that thing because there. To be honest, with when it comes to psychology, compatibility is always the number one factor. True. That when it comes to being uh, a successful relationship, mm -hmm. so. Okay, Talk, sure. There's a yeah, answer that question. Sure. Well, there's a few things there. Um, first off, I I kind of reject this. It's easier to control thing. I mean, it's not a control. It's not a control thing. Always with the shaming language when it comes to men's preferences. But um, you could argue that women actually have quite a bit of power when it comes to because women are the gate gatekeepers. Of sex. The other thing I would point out is an older, say a woman who's 30, who's like really like, let's say the clock is ticking and she's like, I need to find a guy. You could actually make the argument that a woman in their 30s is more, you could more readily manipulate her because she's like really seeking out something long term. Not Where the it, younger woman not, has much more options. Younger women, she's a younger time. woman exactly. like mm -hmm. is, yeah, so I mean... But okay, what's your qu what, yeah, what, what is the question? I mean, yeah, is is one of the reasons that eighteen year olds are more besides being sexually attractive? Because I don't see what else you see in an eighteen year old. She's bangable. Well, okay, but, sure, sure, sure. There's yeah. more. Okay, so in addition to just like on an intellectual level, being like, okay, I think women between the age of like eighteen to twenty five, just again, don't shoot the messenger. A lot of a lot mm. of men think this way. They yeah, might not no, admit it I too. Know would yeah. say like objectively like I think that's the peak age range when it comes to physical attractiveness absolutely um, it's also a, just an evolutionary biological thing because it, it 
it's related to fertility. Younger women are more fertile. So not only can you intellectualize, like she actually, she actually looks more physically attractive on an intellectual level, younger women are more capable of bearing children. Of so there's a, there's a built-in evolutionary attraction trigger to prefer, for men to prefer younger women because they're more fertile. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty large basis of mm -hmm. physical attraction. What I'm, but what I'm asking you is, the, the, one of the most important things is that there's also the emotional intimacy vulnerability part like how do you connect to an 18 year old because as a 30 they were all the same age i i cannot connect to someone i also love men and women men. are different men and women are we, different we are on a, we are different but i'm asking you how you connect to an 18 year old when it comes to intimacy vulnerability because compatibility is a very strong factor to relationship success so i'm just asking journey. you how do you get to that intimacy part well when I, it comes I, to okay sure 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 hmm. so we're not shaming you for being attracted to younger women. It's just what else besides okay. their attractiveness like, do you, you do? You guys ask. Do you okay, have let, let him, let him answer. Lot. Let no, him answer. And yeah. Besides, like biological okay, stuff. Okay, let like, him oh, answer. Well, but I mean, what like like besides that? <laughs> okay, let him. Answer. The biological reasons are pretty substantial. You don't, you don't even want kids, though. So does it matter? Well, no, I didn't. I didn't. Ask, I'm uh, I'm a little on the fence when it comes to kids. Okay. I could, I couldn't. We'll see how life goes. I have my own dilemmas in life that may may want me. Jesus, I can't speak tonight, um, or any night for that matter, uh, that, <laughs> that may want me to not have kids. But I'm on the fence. I, can't, I do want to have kids, but we'll, we'll see how life goes. Um, okay, so what you're saying, what, what is the compati compatibility with someone no. who's younger? I'll tell you this. I've, as someone who's dated women my age, who've, who's dated women who are even older than me into their 40s, I can tell you that the same bullshit that you deal with in any sort of relationship can manifest manifest itself at mm -hmm. any age. I know some, in, and I've dated some immature people who are in their 30s. I'm sure some of you here who are in your 30s, late 30s, early 30s, I think we have, you're 42, correct? Um, we have people, quite a few people here in their 30s, maybe some of you in your 20s have dated people in your 30s. How's their maturity level? Like, it's not, Sometimes it's it really, depends. Sometimes but, it depends. but like, to say that dating someone your age is going to be a guarantee that there's compatibility and that there's maturity is fallacious. Uh, in the same way that there's someone who could be 21 that's actually very compatible with you, very mature, mm -hmm. and then the additional benefits, low body count, likely to be low body count, as you, the, mm -hmm. the more years you've been on this planet, the more people you fucked. You know? Well, it's both way. What's your body it's count? It's both right? way. I'm, well, we'll get, we can get into <laughs> yeah. that later, but typically, like, as you get older, like, your body count but that's, increases. But that's, that's also way. false, but that's, I can also be false, though. Well, sure, you could, you could be 35 and have three yeah. sexual partners, and you could be 18 and have 30 exactly. sexual partners. We've had girls on the show who, yeah. at 18, 19, 20, 21, have had 50, 60, 70, 100 Correct. plus sexual partners. So, of course, it's not like, but, that same person at 18 is likely to have more sexual partners by the time she reaches 28. Yeah. So, and certainly if I look at a 33 year old woman, when she was 23, she probably had fewer sexual partners when she was 23. Obviously I can't time travel and go hook up with her when, in, when she was 23, but um, so body count's important. Men prefer women with low body, well, <laughs> most men, prefer women with lower body count. I feel like I also want that. Well, for I, 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 feel like that I want you to be like 60, 50. 50. Yeah, yeah. But, so we'll, yeah. yeah, no, I, I guess I you actually don't want that. Yeah. Will don't get ask, me wrong. Will, like, will you say this to another girl? Will you ask a girl, why are no, you dating because, someone that is 10 years younger? No, will yeah, you? no. Actually, I, yeah. I, I, because yeah. I'm why? the same way. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I prefer So when you meet someone, the first thing... One mic, guys. Yeah, no, I agree with... I completely agree with you on that, but definitely I feel like it's a very generalized view, but with the whole they're more sexually attractive i completely agree and with the same thing you can meet an immature person at 30 and you can yeah sure I completely look don't, agree. And, and don't get me wrong it's not like i exclusively date young women like i've said i date women my age in their 30s um i find women who are in their 30s attractive however i'm not gonna like sit here and lie to you <laughs> and say that 
if I, if you like, I don't know how to pr perfectly articulate this, but women between the ages of say 18 to 25, me personally, and I think I speak for a lot of men here, now there's a question of can we get those women, that's a different question, <clears throat> but I would say those women, purely speaking, physical attractiveness, I think they're the most physically attractive. Right. And I think to both men and women, physical attract physical attraction is very very important it is well and i think we're leaving one really important thing out here which is m women in that age range tend to go for men in their 30s who are established and make money and things of that nature is it the right thing to do we can all have our own opinions on that but that My is DMs what those women are seeking from 18 to 25 <laughs> is you know they're going for 30 year olds right yeah and then sometimes I also want to add, like you meet someone, like either through work or through here and there, and you don't ask about how old are you, how old are you. Like, like there's a chemistry, you like you guys get along, and then like, yeah. and then oh wow, we are like have an age a gap of seven years. So what do you do with that? Oh, just because you're seven years older than me or younger than me, I'm not gonna date you. No, I'm gonna date you because I feel like I have compatibility with you. So age doesn't matter if that in that sense. Also, I just think that you know, women who are between the ages of, say, 18 to 25 typically have less relationship baggage than women who are in their 30s. So, I mean, th that's another component. That's related to body count. The more people you've slept with, like, the more relationship baggage that you've probably accrued. And like, oh, I have I, a question. Well, I, guess yeah. I should start dating 21 Aside from guys. them not having so-and-so, what do they have then, apart from the physical attractiveness? Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's say we find you that perfect 18 to 25 range. Sure. Like, what else is there? Like, well, I mean, are you looking for a, for a lasting relationship, her. though, with this perfect 18, 20, 18 to 25 range? Sure. Yeah, like, what's the goal oh, what of is the that? relationship? What's the perfect sure. I, well, first off, I'm not, I have no interest in one-night stands, whether that's with someone my age or with someone younger. Uh, sleeping with someone once, to me, is just a to at least in my view, it's a waste of time. There's, there's no, I, there's a whole bunch of reasons why, but it's not worth it. Um, if I want to sleep with somebody, I want there to be a continuity. I want to continue mm -hmm. seeing them. Mm -hmm. um, so no, it, it wouldn't be a short-term thing. So I eventually, mean, it's commitment. But what gets you to goal, that commitment? Yeah. So yeah. what other things would bind you together to move forward to a commitment? As like opposed to someone, a woman as opposed who's to just 30? a physical, yeah. you know, sex stuff. I mean, what is yeah, it but like? There, but like, what, okay, so a lot of people will say, well, a woman who's 31 is more established in her career and... No, but, let's just go back to the 18, and 20, 18 to 20. No, 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 but what I'm trying to say is like, a lot of people will argue, oh, well, one of the benefits of dating a woman who's a bit older, she's more established in her, in her career. Men don't really care about that. Mm -hmm, because sure, I mean, yeah. we went around the table, except for you, I think every single girl here said, you want the man to pay. So like your, your success, women who like men, you being successful doesn't make you more attractive to a guy. Is it like a good for you, like it's awesome if you're successful, but your success is not a metric with which men will look at a woman and be like, oh, she's more attractive because of, because of her success. In the same way a woman would look at a guy who's a doctor and attorney and be like, whoa, okay, that's kind of, they might be more attracted to him because of the, uh, prestige that comes with certain careers or the wealth that he has because women don't share their resources with men in the same way that men share their resources with women mm -hmm. so that's just i just want to point that out i know that's not the question you're asking that's just another reason why men are more inclined to date younger women and why older women who are more established in their career it's not like that's not an attraction trigger for men one for evolutionary biological reasons but also just because women don't really share their resources with men the same way that men share their resources with women. But I, I have to disagree a little bit because I think I there's agree. a lot of men that I've spoken to that definitely want a woman who is successful, has a college degree, things like that. And it's not about necessarily financial, but just like mental, like they yeah. have their shit together. They're, Do they? they're not I mean, dependent. I know, I know a lot of- a wife, I think. Oh, go ahead. Oh my God, bro. Wah, wah, wah. <sighs> Don't be mean. Damn. Um, shoot, what Sorry. were you saying? Oh, I was just saying that I think that there's definitely a, a lot of men out there that want a woman who has, you know, got a college degree. She's, you know, got a great career, things like that. From the mental yeah. perspective, yeah, this you know, is less about financial dependency or resources uh, from the man to the woman, but I just about having a woman who has some level of intellect that they can have a conversation with and that, you know, the woman's like, you know, definitely 
got goals and dreams and ambition. I think a lot of men like that. Yes. So it's kind of hard because really. for me, for me, yeah, for me personally, it's, it's a little bit hard. We met them. Brian, Brian, how old are you? 34. 34. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm 24. So he's 10 years older than me. But I think a lot of guys, at least around my age, do mm. not look for that at all. Maybe if you're a little bit older and you're looking for a yeah. wife. 24 but, is a little bit too young to like look. And your brain's not fully developed yeah, yet. Yeah. Yeah. Wait like till 25. Yeah. Yeah. There Wait till 25. Yeah. It's a man with a smile. But even then. Because even you, then, you know at the 25, majority, you're just finishing the school. Like, yeah. you know, it's different than when you're 35. But I can speak even, I can even watch a chat. I can guarantee that nobody looks for that. So ha, this mm. is the thing. That's so how really, about if you're a girl, uh, there's a 21 year and, and they, for example, are doing, let's see. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't say that they're doing, you know, just like, um, they're just like, in, not that influencers make a lot of money, but say that they were just doing maybe like an OnlyFans thing and they want to get married, mm. you know, and they want to yeah, get married to I you. I mean, if you're doing OnlyFans. Wait, no. so, okay, but she's highly attractive mm -hmm. and say that there's, there's this woman who has a PhD in childhood development. She's published. She's, uh, does, um, a bunch of panels all the time and you know that she's going to be a good mother to your children. But she does OnlyFans? No. Wait, there's okay. two different women. So, so wait, just like and she said earlier, she, it's not a detriment. It's not a detriment either. So is it, does it, is it kind of netting neutral? Like it's not necessarily a detriment or a... It doesn't... Um, it's not, it's not a make or break. It's so not it's neutral. Necessary. So well, you would choose... So what I'm saying is we don't search for that. It's not a yeah. So it doesn't matter who's going to be the important. mother. So it's not, it doesn't matter who, who you don't care about who's going to be a good mother to your children. What does that have to do? Hold on, we were, we were talking about finances. No, yeah, I so know. <clears throat> but I'm saying like you guys literally just base it on it doesn't matter what she does in her life, her intellect or her thing. No, we're t I'm talking about money and finances. Yeah, we're talking about money. Yeah. Like I, you can be I smart know. and not. Like but she don't. said, yeah. but she said. A guy likes also should care about the intellect, her the degree, well, and all of that stuff. She listed multiple different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I'm but focused on the exact topic of what we're talking about. Okay, but so the what about but what about also? Yes, women who are smart are attractive. There, there you go. Yeah, I mean you don't you can be smart and not be a doctor. Well, I guess what other qualities aside from like. So. Okay. Like personality qualities, do but you guys look, look for? Well, okay, like look, are women just like? Why do we have to ask? Or do you like to talk to them too? Yeah, are women just meat bags, or do you like to talk to them too? No, yeah. but like this this idea. That <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Say well, that again. Say I that said, again. are women just <laughs> meat bags, meat. or do you like to talk to them too? Is that, that directed question. at me? I, no, I was just talking to Brian. Yeah, I was about to say. Well, okay. So as somebody who's actually, I I'd say I'm kind of more on the introverted side. I actually. I actually do appreciate, like, I, I don't know, some people feel the need to, like, constantly be yapping. Mm -hmm. I'm actually totally cool. Like, I think a, a hallmark of a good relationship is comfort and silence. Mm -hmm. Not needing mm -hmm. to have to be fucking blabbing all the time. So, but, of course, I don't want, like, a brain-dead partner. But, like, <laughs> I also, I mean, this perhaps coincides with someone who's capable of talking a lot. I don't want someone <laughs> who's like very compa combative. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's so, okay. like, peace is very important to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, Does that mean all intelligent people they talk a lot? Uh, no, not, not necessarily. necessarily. But not this idea, really. this no. idea that I need, like, I must have really deep conversation. Actually, I. I do. I, I definitely. I, 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 love I, I will agree with you on that. I love it. I need yeah. deep yeah. I need smart person. We don't I need spend intellectually. I need to be attracted. And then I'm not. I'm gonna walk away. I don't know if that makes know. you smart. I need to be smart. I'm trying to think of the word. Hmm? It's introspective. Hmm. That's that's kind of what I look for. Hmm. But not necessarily smart. Like. Oh, oh yeah, no! I've had design. experiences. I've had experiences yeah. where I'm like. Smart. I've had experiences where I'm like okay let's hey babe let's put on a show and she wants to talk during the fucking show i'm like, <laughs> She's like what's that yo can Who's we this? just what's going can on can we just chill just can, can we just chill and watch the show yeah. or like sometimes I, it's like but um no it's not like i can have very good conversations with people of any age like this idea that again like someone who's young doesn't have a certain level of maturity maybe they they don't have certain life experiences but i mean i look I, i'm sure we can all agree here there's people that you've dated in your age cohort that are terrible people that are yeah, not sure. mm -hmm. particularly interesting or they're yes. so you can find good people i think at any age 
Um, and so I don't know. And it just um, sounds like you're more willing to tolerate it from you know 18 to 25, and that's totally fine. That's totally okay. That's no, allowed. I don't want to tolerate. I don't want to tolerate. Really like, well, no, someone yeah, like who's a bad no, someone who's like a bad person, or if you're weeding through, like if you're gonna deal with the annoying things that come with any kind of person, he's more willing to tolerate it oh. from like. 18 sure. to 25 year old okay. versus oh, so she, okay. like, I and mean, that's, that's fine. That's all, that's all we were asking. Like well, what not, other than I'm like her breedability for example, is like a selling point. Then, yeah, you know, but I'm, I'm not going to tolerate a woman who has borderline personality disorder. I don't care how fucking hot she is. Yeah, no. But like, I just meant like talking through movies, like a little bit, like just oh, like little, like harmless quirks. Sure, like sure, sure, what's sure. a deal breaker for you? That's like, but there are, but what I'm trying, of, there, there are some men that will tolerate like absolutely egregious behavior like what? If if the person is attractive enough. And that applies to both men and women. Like That's if the true, person yeah. is attractive enough, they'll like overlook certain red flags, they'll like tolerate certain, certain behavior. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. really trying to get at Ariana Grande. For me, like if a girl like if there's serious issues there, I don't care how hot she is, I'm not tolerating major major issues. So mm. yeah, good times. Oh, really quick just to go back to the plastic surgery stuff. Um <laughs> Because I don't know, there's a little bit of pushback on that. So, I would prefer a woman, like, so let's say a woman had fake breasts. But before she was totally flat. A lot of people might think, whoa, like, I, I would prefer her totally flat as she was. I don't mm -hmm. care if they were lopsided, if one was bigger than the other, whatever the fuck. I don't care. I would prefer her as she was without fake breasts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Same yes. with same with uh, yes. lipo. I prefer a girl. I prefer a girl with a little bit of belly fat mm -hmm. than with a lipo belly. Yes. I think it doesn't look great. Uh, BBL. I prefer a girl with a flat butt than with a big BBL. I think mm -hmm. it looks weird. Uh, what's the other one? Lip fillers. I prefer a girl with a small upper lip than with lip fillers. I think that's this coming really back. Great. I think like way less women are getting lip filler now. Like a lot of girls are getting it dissolved, which I love. I'm excited to see women be more confident Based. with their own. Face, yeah, I think Based, it's I guess. definitely coming back. Um, that was very mm -hmm. wholesome. All right, let me let me yeah. get a couple chats That's very here. Awesome. We have uh, Doc Venablis. Sorry, but white coat, you are such a hypocrite. You bragged yeah. about all the dough you make, but will not have a second date if the man won't pay. No wonder you have trouble with dates, cats, lots. Wow. If Whatever. I have trouble with dating. Whatever. Oh, well, there you go. Um, She's kind of a baddie. Wait, I saw in your Instagram it said you were a feminist. Is that correct? Feminist and liberal both. I, I cannot ca like categorize myself just with like one. I definitely am a feminist, but I have also life showed me that I have to respect men so much too. And like I'm not gonna judge because oh you're a man and basically I'm gonna disregard and this is my belief system. So kind of about two years ago, like I have respect to human being and is is not based on if you're a male or female. Okay, but like. But so, it's, but I have lots of lots of passion for women. It's sure. like a part of me because I'm a survival and I survived in life and I had a very very hard life coming out from Iran and Middle East and being really uh, living in a very suppressed country. Mm -hmm. So like there's a part of me always want to fight for women and then uh, like my heart goes for women. Maybe not as much as goes for men. Okay, but like as a fe as a feminist. Um kind of what what are the primary things that you believe in related to that like, like i believe oh. women should not sell their body oh okay there's different absolutely there's I different think. feminist views on that on one some feminists believe that women should have the freedom freedom to, if to you want to have fun i'm perfectly fine with but then it. there's the other side of well it's for the benefit of the male gaze and uh you know you're, you're mm. being uh, objectified, and it, you're, you're uh, being uh, what's the other word that's often used? Empowered. Well, no, that's the that's anti, what they say. like anti-porn yeah. feminist. Oh, objectified? Um, you mean? Yeah. No, there's another term that objectified. is evading me, but um, okay. You know, I usually I never go to um, strip club. Um, yeah. I just somehow randomly ended up two weeks ago in the strip club. I didn't know that's a strip club. I was supposed to go to the bar section and ended up. And watching the girls bending and taking money from floor, and I was just, it was like, I'm getting slapped in the face. I couldn't do it. I want to save them, and I could not oh. stand there. And I would like almost had tears in my eyes, and I'm like, what can I do? What can I contribute to the society so the girl value herself? So the girl go That's find right. a career. The girl finds like something for herself that values more than someone throw money and yeah. then sure. pick it up. 
So wait, as a feminist, do you, you believe in equality? We can't really have 100% equality because okay. we are different species. We can't yeah. really have 100% well, equality. We're not a different species, but that's no, 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 no. Like, I, I mean, we are men and women, and so they're yeah. You're different. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, do you, so like as a feminist, do you think that women, I know you said you're from Iran, so yes. I'll be, let's, do you think women in the West are oppressed? Sometimes they can, yeah. Okay. If they're from smaller cities. Um, because I work with lots of women, mm -hmm. and then majority of my employees are women, so there's I still see that in all mm. different cultures. Okay. Um, I maybe have five uh, fem uh, male employee and like 120 female. Wow, we need to put some quotas on your uh, hiring practices. <laughs> see, that's the, that's what's interesting. I feel like equality, <laughs> like if there's an overrepresentation of women in a field. That's equality. But if there's an overrepresentation of men in the field, that's somehow evidence of I, I know where you're going is completely correct, but also I'm in healthcare. Yeah, so nursing, in healthcare, nurses, more women, how many ma women. male nurses yeah, we do yeah. we have? Same with and education. You, you make good money in nursing. Maybe uh, there should be some quotas, some something. Mm -hmm. there, you know, mm -hmm. There should be a push for, to, for more male nurses, yeah. mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. meet the parents. <laughs> okay um and so do you believe in the patriarchy um, that's kind of a core tenet of feminism i think you know i so i don't believe anything that is like written with how can I say this is like this is the law and you have to believe everything this way i don't believe anything i feel like every human being should be free from choosing and bending a law that it doesn't benefit their life. So for example, I wanna say I'm raised in a Muslim family and then, the, and then my ex-husband was a Muslim and then they wanted me practice certain type of behavior. For example, we couldn't shake hand if they're non-Muslim. And then, so this was norm to this society. So if I touch your hand and you're a Christian or you're a Jew or you're any other nationality is like, a, like I'm almost dirty if I'm touching someone else. So, so then I need to have a freedom, although if I'm raised with that uh, culture, if I'm raised with that religion but, but, and everything. What, what's that have to do with the patriarchy? Can we define the no, patriarchy? I, yeah, I was just gonna ask yeah. that. Well, no, I just wanna say like, like, I don't believe like, yeah, I just want, I was trying oh, okay. to say like, like you should be free to bend over rules whenever you want to and whenever it's wrong with. Wait. If you don't want, if you don't believe any part of it, I'm a bit confused. Well, okay, but th I'm just asking because. <coughs> oh, hold on. Yo, Prometheus, Prometheus thank you, man. Donated one hundred dollars. As a hospital employee, there are copious amount of male nurses. I'm not a nurse, but I can attest I've seen them and communicated with them. Oh well, yeah, there's For definitely sure. some. Of course, yeah, yeah. there's definitely some of males. Course. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Well, I'm sure there, the there's. I'm sure the there's. Uh, They've released statistics on the breakdown of nurses. I don't know what it is, but it's probably it's largely women for sure. It's for sure. Yeah. I don't know if it's eighty percent, ninety percent, but it's um, pretty high. It's pretty high. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. I'm just asking because you described yourself as a feminist, mm -hmm. but you also want a guy to pay for a first date. You, you know, let me, tell, let me tell you why. Let me okay. tell you why. Tell because me, I've been, me. I've been, uh, because of um, I know this is going to sound a little bit cheesy, and it's not going to be like, but I've been conned before. Like you got conned. Yes, it would like also guys coming after money, also guys coming and looking for like, oh, for you like seeking financial benefits or this and that. So because of that is like, usually I have a lifestyle. If I want to enter the guy in my life, there is lots of financial benefit that whoever comes in my life, they, um, they will receive. So if they cannot even pay for the first date and I'm like, mm, I'm going to have problem with my lifestyle. So I think this can be more personal to my life. Maybe not going to be applied to everyone else. Life. Right. But I just feel like if you're a feminist, you believe in equality and wouldn't it like the equal thing be to pay on a first date or so split. no or, so that's yeah, what split, so that's what i said so i choose a part of being feminist not all of it so it's like like okay. so i do believe equality but not 100 percent because we can't be for example 100 percent equal that's what i was trying I to say we can't be equal as a man and woman there. but 
I mean, so equality when it benefits you? Yeah, that's what it sounds yes. like a little bit. Were oh, you okay. saying? Oh, she admits it. There you <laughs> go. Okay, yeah, show's over. So over. <laughs> well, and that's what she was meaning by the laws, I think, yeah. too. Or in, in saying, you know, one can bend. She believes that one can kind of almost bend laws when it's, or like the patriarchy, like societal things, when it benefits them is almost what you were what saying, is, right? What is the patriarchy? I thought it was like... There so is like, no, have you seen the Barbie movie? Did you, did you see the Barbie movie? Did you see the Barbie movie? No, oh I said, gosh. what is the okay. no? What is the patriarchy? No, I know. So if, I, I like, was asking if you've seen the Barbie movie because I have, and it's not about horses. Barbie so what is it movie. about? Uh, so the in the Barbie movie, uh, they kind of go into what patriarchy and matriarchy is. Uh, right. So just you more get your yes. feminist talking points from, from a Hollywood. From I was more interested in Oppenheimer, but yeah, no, I watched that too. It was so good. Killian Murphy. Anyway, sorry. Wait, hold on. How old is Killian Murphy? He's 45, Barry. I looked. Yes, <laughs> and Mary. said what I said, He's Mary. Brian. Wait, hold on. How old are you? 28. Oh, That's a reasonable oh, age. Right. Reasonable know, age. I'm past my prime He's of 25. Married. I know. That's like a, <laughs> I know. I have such a crush on him. Well, that's, a, that's a pretty big age gap there, though. I'm I know. Saying, you know. But it's fine, because I'm not 18 to 25, right? He's writing that down. Right He's there. writing that down. <laughs> Red flag. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do a couple soup chats here. We have uh, DJ... Talk far. Thank you, man. Brandon, I know you got them big bucks, but you need to spend some on the tan. You damn near as white as the table, my guy. I thought he was going to do a, uh, like, under the table on his phone, do a little fucking champagne. You know, I'm actually, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm going to get there, but. uh, Oh, okay. Brandon. Champagne or no? Whatever the. Uh, okay, Bender the Offender, ladies, if your dream man was dating your female best friend, would you try to steal him from her? Ariana, Gr- Ariana Grande? Never. Her? Never. If your dream Hell man no. was dating your female best Never. friend, would you try to steal Wait, him from her? Trying to Ariana Grande her. We just oh, she's that. like, yes, I would. She's like, yes, Ooh, me? Oh, no, not me. No. I feel like my dream man wouldn't be dating my okay, best Okay, wait, friend. so if Killian Murphy was dating your best friend. <laughs> And no. <laughs> you get, what would you do? I didn't like the Barbie movie Look, at all. <laughs> all I'm going to say Everyone is. Everyone thinks I said I liked it. I didn't say I liked it. Just because soccer has a goalie doesn't mean you can't score. That's all. I'm okay. kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, you can't be, like, if someone is dating someone, especially in your personal circle, that's weird. And I'm going to be honest, like, I don't want your seconds. Uh, that's weird. That's weird to me. Interesting. And it's like, if you didn't, if you had the option between my friend and me and you picked her, why would I want you after you already picked someone else? Whether it's my friend or not, I don't really. He's not really my dream man. I wouldn't think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's odd. I feel like if you can steal a man, that man. Honestly, he's kind of trash. Like, if you can steal like him, trash it. he's if like, oh, let's just see if you can who's take, the hottest yeah. one. Yeah. So I'm gonna say no on that I one. I will never go after a man can be. Stealing. If Killian Murphy's ever single. Yeah. X Five Podcast. It's so cool. You have the chick from Rocky Four on your pod. Oh my god. She has aged so well. I don't know what that's a reference to. Yeah. I don't know. I the guy's no probably fat that and plays video games all the time. That's, that's said that. Yeah. But anyway, he's a, next. He drinks Mountain Dew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he probably has Mountain Dew <laughs> for sure. With like a Cheeto as a garnish. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, 40, 45 is. Guys, like go to twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop a follow, drop a prime sub. Twitch.tv slash whatever. If you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch. It's a quick, free, easy way to support the show every single month twitch.tv slash whatever thank you guys appreciate it um actually wait bring it back i got a shout out to everybody <clears throat> yo shanna thank you for the prime short thank you for the prime bort thank you for the prime bro i can't pronounce it cow thank you for the prime gino thank you for the prime nine thank you for the prime zeus thank you for the prime big jc thank you for the prime for three months appreciate it man thank you for the fo- all the follows guys appreciate it uh okay were we we read Super chance? If your dream man was dating your female best friend, would you try to steal him from we her? Just, we I mean, said no. Yeah, yeah, we all said no. All right, we got Puffy Vegas. If I said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. There's no such thing as a faithful woman. Wrong. Wow. Wrong. That's Disagree. Not, I, if you, yeah, I, no. I mean, you've been hurt. I'm sorry, Puffy yeah. Vegas. Yeah. All right, we have Sean Medellin. Thank you, man. From my understanding, the story came out as false this week. Just saying, but she definitely has a pattern of this. Oh, that was about Ariana. Wait, the yeah. story's false? No, I don't think so. Okay, if you look what? at the guy Allegedly. compared to Ariana, I kind of thought, really? Is I mean, that, they are we don't. sure about that? I to be know. fair, he's probably like such a Chad. <laughs> he's played SpongeBob on Broadway. Are you sure about that? Here's the thing, though. <laughs> like the <laughs> Broadway dudes, the Broadway dudes are just—they're just getting ran through. The Boston well, Marathon. Like, 
I think a lot of a lot of the men on Broadway are are not straight. I think I'm pretty sure like a lot of men in theater are not straight. Yeah. So like the the ones that are in the same way like a straight oh, male ballerina yeah. is like fucking all the ballerinas like <laughs> just because like there's probably, no competition. So he's just <laughs> gone through all the theater chicks, I guess. I don't know. Um, wow, okay. That's my bro science theory there. Um I didn't know it was fake though, but thank you, Sean. Uh, X5 podcast. It's so cool you have the chick from Rocky Four on your pod. She has aged well. Uh, thank, you. thank you, X5. Appreciate it. Oh, whoa. Wow. Fuck, holy $500 shit. $500 to uh, say Oh my God. I thought that was 100 oh, Holy nope. shit, bro. Wow. Yo, X5. Thank you very much. Um, uh-huh. I'd like to. Keep the insults coming. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm going to pay for them. Too, wow. That, thank you. That's. Uh, yeah. Let me, we'll I'll, take them all day. Is it towards you? We'll take your cash. No, I don't know who it's towards, but I mean, yeah. thank you for the money. <laughs> Yo, I've dude, X5. I think this is Jeff. Jeff, if this is you, thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Um, I, I'd like to remind, send a little reminder there. Guys, YouTube takes a 30% cut of Super Chat revenue, membership revenue. So instead of Super Chatting, I do direct you guys to try to go to streamlabs.com slash whatever. You can do it through Super Chat. It's fine. It's not a big deal. But uh, if you want less of your, if you, or excuse me, if you want more of your contribution to actually go towards whatever and not into the pockets of woke megacorp mm-hmm. YouTube that doesn't need the money, um, consider doing it through Streamlabs because they only take 3%, whereas YouTube, as I said, takes 30%. So what is 30% of 500? That's 150, I believe. Too much. much. Wait. Yeah, it's a lot. 30, 30, 30. Never do math in public. Yeah, so like, <laughs> <laughs> you're giving 100, <laughs> Never. if you're doing this, you're, you're giving $150. Again, I'm, I'm super grateful, very thankful, but just keep in mind, you're giving $150 of this 500 to YouTube, whereas if you did through Streamlabs, I think it would be like, there'd be like a 20 buck, $20 payment processing fee on a $500 uh, so just, you know, you know, just food for thought, guys. Food for thought if you want to do it through yeah. Streamlabs, but either way is fine. I know it's cooler because on YouTube it like shows in the chat. So it's it, whatever you guys want. Just you know, Blake Rollins, thank you, man. Marriage is a vow to love and cherish till death, not a vow to love and cherish only if you're happy. Yo, very, very good point. I pray my future wife stands by me through it all. Yeah, I mean that's the Power other thing. Prayer. The vows you say, like your word, wor- people's words means nothing. Till death, till death do us part has to mean something. In sickness and in health. What's the other part in... in, in uh, for better or for worse. For better or for worse. <laughs> yeah, for rich or for poor. Wait, okay. in sickness well, and in health, like, walk, isn't yeah. there a stat that usually when a partner gets sick, it's usually the guy who leaves oh. the relationship? I think it's fake news. Is it fake news? I think that's fake news. Real news in Middle East and Asia. I think it's fake news. Fake news. Like if you were like if you were really suffering from Hashimoto's, like I'd I'd stick it out. Just saying. If um, you were really suffering. I would. <laughs> okay. I would. You know. I wouldn't. You know. Just saying. Okay. Puffy Vegas. We have. Uh, thank you, man. I'm a 48 year old man. I know what this girls are saying now is a youthful thinking, but listen to this. 100 percent. Oh, Puffy, come on, brother. Of women my age who don't have kids <laughs> are depressed and miserable. Listen to me once. You cannot have kids. It's too late. You know what though. You know what, though? I think a really like rebuttal for, to this on, from the other side is that, well, like, I don't think men are holding up that great either. I don't think anybody. Wait, I don't think anybody not holding up well and what? Well. well, like, I mean, if you look at um, rates, there is something to be said about like the the comparative rates of like uh, depression or whatever between men and women in certain age cohorts, oh, yeah. but like men are deleting themselves more. So like. Married I don't men know, are happier, you know, yeah. and uh, they make more money. <laughs> so, okay, K- KV Moga, thank you, man. The best value women brings to the planet is giving birth. Don't be a slave to modern feminism. Yuck. Lies and propaganda. I don't know. A woman took us to the moon. Uh, well, a lot of you know, it's, it's, a, a, it's a special thing to give birth. Scientist that wrote, a mathematician that wrote all the code. I mean, I think that's a pretty amazing thing to add to the world besides just a child. Agreed. I mean, a woman birthed her to be able to do that. Sure, I'm not saying that isn't <laughs> valuable, but that's not the only purpose only, that woman that's has. Under, that's on under the planet. value. Well, he's saying the best value. Yeah, yeah. it's a in very special opinion. thing to be in able to opinion. bring life into this world. Yeah, I, I agree I with you. I think, I, I mean, my my view on this is, and I've said this before, um, there are certainly ramifications of doubling the labor pool when we kind of did that, economically speaking, and case in point like you can no longer raise a family on one 
uh, income, generally speaking. But uh, I do think it's beneficial that we've opened up the uh, labor pool to women insofar as uh, we can now, and I'm using this term in the most charitable sense of the term, we can now exploit women's genius and intelligence and brilliance to tackle some of the most um, difficult problems uh, that we as the human race are facing. Chiefly, for example, I think it's wonderful if we have more women pursuing uh, like cancer research. I think it's wonderful for us to throw women's intelligence and manpower, or I suppose wo woman, woman power, power. <laughs> uh, towards those issues. I mean, so uh, I think more women should get into STEM and yeah. more people in general should Agreed. get into STEM and attempt to tackle, uh, because I mean, cancer, known, cancer knows no gender, uh, illness knows no yeah. mm -hmm. gender. So I think uh, if we can tap into women's intellect to attempt to solve these things, I'm, I'm all for it. All right, we have Mount Whateverest missed mm -hmm. moving that three of clubs. Oh, you're right. What does that What's mean? That? What does that mean? Oh, I think inside joke. Like, you know, I'm a big solitaire buff. So Puffy Vegas, oh, hey, thank you, man. I'm going to rate the girl starring with the girl from Rocky for seven, eight, six, seven, six, six, seven, and the girl in the hat, 7.5. What about me? <laughs> you're you're, you're seven, a male, I so I don't, he was rating the girls. Oh. We have DJ Takvar, hey, thank you. Brunette Shorty next to Brandon. What's your ethnicity? You're fine as hell, girl. Hashtag shooters shot. Shoot, oh. excuse me. Also, God damn it, Brian, we need more room temp IQs on the show. Let me be your talent scout. I'd have that panel so inept that it'd make Biden look like MLK. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I think the panel's actually been uh, really good uh, Spanish, tonight. By the so way. sometimes there's a lack of discussion going on so i appreciate people actually having some input on things thank you dj puffy i've known a lot of utah girls my point they were not having they were doing back puffy, puffy my dude <laughs> bro i dm'd you on instagram puffy are you gonna answer me if you don't answer me i will be very disappointed sir uh hold on what the fuck <laughs> oh rip hold on my, what the f okay we have brand uh what Bender the Offender, Army Lady. I have a sneaking suspicion you were a barracks bunny. Barracks so bunny. they're referring to a barracks bunny because God forbid a woman be beautiful and be in the military. So there, be, there's been a lot of comments like this saying that I'm sure, you know, that they're sure I was just a barracks bunny. But not only did I serve in Afghanistan and work with women and children in a war torn country for almost two years, uh, but I was also a rappel master, air assault, uh, and the first female in the history of the Oregon Army National Guard uh, to pass uh, rappel master school. So. Uh, definitely not that a barracks awesome. bunny by any means. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely a lot more intelligent than that. And I just did your dad only. Sorry. <laughs> Wait. Oh, oh, I love that. Bender the offender. Oh. 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 What's a barracks so you, bunny? Barracks. Wait, so like barracks is where people live in the military. It's the, it's referred to as the barracks. Oh. oh. Yeah. It's a nice try. Did, did you ever... Uh, any... <laughs> did, I, did I ever have any military relations? No, no, no. Did you ever? <laughs> You're gonna have to text what? It. I, yeah. You were in. What, you said Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the you question. You ever kill a man? Oh come on, move on. Yeah, move on. Yes. Well, no, that's no, not. Move on. That's uh -huh. not. Uh -huh. mm -mm, move okay. On. Oh, okay. Well, all right. What's your other kind of body count? <laughs> yeah, the other body count. The all other right, body all count. right. Here I am. All right. Puffy Vegas, I'm 48 years. I've known thousands of men. I've owned several businesses. I've never once heard a man bring up a woman's finances. We do not care. We do not care. Et cetera, et cetera. We do not care. Uh, yeah. I can't wait to be <coughs> mid at my job. Oh. Ben to the offender donated $99. So you smashed a bum. Damn, that's a loss for you. Oh, for the dad comment. Damn. Wait, what? <laughs> when you made this that. is Bender the Offender. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what oh, yeah, keep the money coming. Let's get this man yeah. paid. So what? So you smashed a bum. No, he's saying that damn his dad's you. a bum. Yeah. Oh. And you smashed a sure. bum. <laughs> Whatever you want. Send more, send more money. Team. Wow, this is getting deep. <laughs> well, that's money. why he's being rude on you. Yeah. yeah. Is because oh, he had so a horrible father. He's got a real quality life. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh boy. He, he's, he's rude on you because it. he thinks you're attractive. I know. That's the thing. He'll be DMing me later. This always happens. You're going to get bullied. This is not my first rodeo. He's going to come for, for your... Okay. Uh, Matthew Saturn. Hey, thank you for the 50. Uh, first time ch catching y'all. Sevens all day. Question for the panel. Why do we need money? Mm -hmm. 
Why do Welcome we to the money? Whatever Economic Policy Podcast. <laughs> um, why do we need <laughs> money? Yeah, honestly, buy gold. We, bit, we need sure. money. So, uh, I mean, uh, you know, FBGM. you barter instead of trading goats for <laughs> tailoring. It's like a way to, you know, it's a way to, you know. I actually don't know how, why do we need money? Hmm. So we can exchange so it for goods and services, so I don't have to go and shoot my dinner every night. <laughs> there we go. That is fun, though. Going yeah. 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 oh, no, right. hunting Matthew is fun. Yeah. I think it would be fun. It is um, super fun. I just, like, I need LASIK in my eyes. I can't see, so I would probably miss. And, Me too. Yeah. It healthy. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, can we go find my LASIK surgery? Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to try to come back to a couple of the points that you guys sent in the pre-show information uh let's see we have amy the challenges of dating today it's so hard to find people who want a traditional relationship what is a traditional relationship wait what did i say i can't remember what i said when i wrote it L literally what i just said <laughs> but what is a traditional relationship um well i mean uh Traditional relationship. You, you said it's like, hard to find. Yeah. So who well, wants we, I was referring to Los Angeles, like in Los Angeles, which is where I live. Um, Wait, who here is from LA or lives in LA? Lives in LA. Swordless donated one hundred. Are you in LA? What's yeah. wrong with you? Okay. They are tasty. Ma ha 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 ha. What's wrong with goats? <laughs> no, it, go, well, listen. There's there's, oh. there's nothing wrong with goats, but just like as a matter of simplicity, when it comes to bartering, like you got to bring the goat to the dude. And then he's got to get you some moccasins. It's fucked. Like, <laughs> we don't, you know, that's why we have money. We, you know, makes it easier. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Right. So people can do the work you don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah, Here's I'm going to do it. My, I was rewarded with these pieces of paper which have value for my labor. I am now trading it for your labor. That also has Guys, I'm not a fucking. Econ <laughs> I don't know yeah. the fucking economy shit. Okay, um, wait. Go ahead. We were talking about uh, relationships in traditional. LA. Traditional. Yeah. So I mean, what's traditional relationship? Like in Los Angeles today, like there's so many. As you're kind of going through the dating apps and stuff, there's so many men who um, are you know out in the open and say, "I want like an ethical, non-monogamous." Oh, e yeah, exactly. Relationship, and it, it just seems like that's overwhelmingly the norm in Los Angeles now and so I, when I talk about like a traditional relationship um, I mean like you know monogamous exclusivity not having an open relationship sure yeah. okay all right anybody here also want a traditional relationship yeah yeah not you what, what do you want are you are you ethically non-monogamous I've always been monogamous okay what why are you looking at me that way? <laughs> I'm just saying no. um <laughs> I think my answer is going to d uh, depend on the next partner, so I'm open to that. See, You're open I don't to what? I'm open to figuring out what I want when I finally meet that person. Well, mm. when I meet a person. Would you be okay with it being open on his end but closed on yours? Open on his end? And like he could see other girls but you can't see other Why guys? Why would we arrive at that, though? It, there has to be a reason. <laughs> like, usually you go into a relationship having the same values. So why would, why would we eventually get into that? <laughs> because you're kind of like, you know, you're being considerate of your partner. You're just kind of being there nice. There is a good um, discussion there, like with Esther Perel, if you guys are familiar, like she actually asks, um, well, she actually discusses how we try to make that one person into everything, right? Best friend, um, someone who you share I don't know, like sports or whatever your interests are. And she asked this question, should your partner be the only one resource for this kind of connections? It's an open-ended question. It always depends on the type of person that you are. Hmm. So no wrong answers there. I think they should be your priority. Yeah, definitely. Priorities like there. Friends. I mean, but it's have, opening that yeah. talk where realistically, this is according to her, I've been reading mm -hmm. her, it took a village to get you know the resources, the connections that you have, but now we are so concentrated like here, the modern dating. It's oh. very you know then just. Then the offender you and me. donated ninety nine dollars. I don't date women who have deflated lips. No man wants to pump up a tire that has a hole in it. 
<laughs> He's still on oh, it. Boy. I think that's well, to have a response to Bender the Offender. Yeah, I mean, I just want him to keep sending you money. So I mean, go for it. What else you got? That, that, that's your clap back. We're gonna, we're gonna no, I mean, I, like, I'm just not worried about it. I'm just not worried about it. I mean, like the, this, this is the thing. This is not my first time doing a podcast, and it's definitely not my first time having many people be like, "Oh, she was in the military. She must be a barracks bunny," and then go for my lips or my face or whatever. I'm, I'm fine with it. Like, keep it coming. It gets this well, man paid. Guys, respect our veterans. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's you, so disrespectful. Do you yeah. lift? Yeah, I do jujitsu too. Damn, I'm really? Kinda, I'm yeah. kind of Myron. I'm kind of Myron. You're. You, She's got a good, yeah. some yeah. guns. She's got some guns. <laughs> no, I can see the vein yeah. even through yeah, the it's shirt. It's just, I mean, yeah. like, like, honestly, like, who Shit. goes after a fucking combat it's veteran? Yes, yeah, seriously. Like, it's, like yeah. come yeah. on. That's true. Oh, just just, just people that are going to be in my DMs later. That's that's what's going to happen. <laughs> <I know>. Seriously. <laughs> You're like, hey, I'm sorry about they what do, I They said. just want me to be <laughs> dumb. Go out. They just want me to be a dom. And just horrible dad. we just all collectively thank you for your service? No, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. But I'm just like, who does that? Like, I think we should. If you really wanted to clap back at Bender, you would be like, why are you, why is your name like a Futurama? Come on. I mean, I just don't Futurama know why he's so mad. Like, why are you so mad? He's not mad. What's wrong? I just told you. He likes you. Yeah. Period. Maybe he's yeah. like, that's no. a toxic flirting. mentality. Yeah. I, I think it's flirting. flirting. I do toxic think it's flirting. flirting. Like, like men communicate your feelings and but other than just anger. Yeah. <laughs> men be like, I have no feelings. Wait, forgetting about anger. Wait, so just again, show of hands, who wants a traditional relationship? Okay, gotcha. And so, Nikki, you said that um, you said something about uh, you're nice religious, thing. right? You're Christian. <laughs> okay. Uh, you want like a traditional. You said don't have sex before marriage, which is very traditional. It is. But have yeah, you is. have you had any indiscretions or indiscretions? <laughs> had mm. some entanglements. Uh, yeah. Oops. This is more Oops. of like a. Sorry. Now that I'm truly committing to my faith now it's making sense of why wow. this is in, pl in place mm -hmm. because it's not a good you gotta speak uh, into the mic oh, otherwise sorry. they can't hear you sorry um whether you're religious or not sex is a very powerful energy exchange and if you think about it that's as close as you're ever going to physically be with someone well i'm not you asking just why like, you're waiting until marriage but you 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 are waiting until marriage is that yes, correct that is correct but has that always been your standard it hasn't always been my standard. When did your standard change? Last year. Okay, so you're 28, so at 27. Yeah. So previously. Just like just regular in, relationships. Indiscriminate sex like a couple times a week? Or what are we talking about? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I just, I, in peop with people I've dated that I've been in like committed relationships with, I mean. Yeah just like everyone else okay you're intimate and then you break up and then you find another person you're dating but um more recently just thinking it's not helpful to have all these intimate connections with people it's not healthy for you and sure. it's just not it actually is helpful to weed out people because then you're not basing things off of like a primal physical connection though that is important it's very important, but you're forced to see what compatibilities you truly have and if you genuinely enjoy being around this person. So if you take sex out of that equation, while it is a very important element, it can't be the only one. Mm. Mm. Terp 93 donated $99. Yo, thank you, man. Nikki, let me fly you out to DC and have a day date. Hey. You're so effing pretty. Amy, keep bringing the sass. Love it to what I said. Oops. I love that question. We put so much pressure on loving only one person romantically. Yeah, I never become cringe buzzword toe. Aww. Yo, JT, thank you, man. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Um, that was really nice. Thank you. There you go. Uh, do you take... He wants to fly you out to D.C. Do that's you amazing. That? <laughs> that's a, do I get to know anything about him first? No, that's it. He just just his user dropped. handle. <laughs> that sounds like how I get murdered, actually. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, like, yeah. thank you, but why don't we uh, have a conversation first? Okay, That'd JT, if you want to send another chat, let us know <laughs> na age, or the DMs the idea. details, height. Tell us, tell us the details. Um, okay, thank you, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so that one came through. We got all those caught up. Let me just check for... We have this one. Oh, wait, we already did that one. What is wait, catching all sevens? Wait, we got... Okay, I, I have a question for you because we got to pull up your Instagram really quick. Um, My Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. We got to pull your up up your Instagram. Um, Why? Nick, if, if you can pull up her, Nikki's Instagram, por favor. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so while we wait for Nick to do that, I have a question for you. If your boyfriend asked you to make your Instagram private and or 
take down any revealing photos, bikini photos, for example, would you do it? Yeah, why not? Scroll down. Oh, yeah, I think you're it's just so terrible. tasteful. It's not, yeah. it's really I mean, tasteful. I'm from Redondo Beach. Like, I, I'm at the beach a lot. I'm. <laughs> are these like? Are these bad? No, no, no. It's okay. I mean, I can, I can handle some criticism if they're too much. I'll take them down. I don't mind. But you wouldn't object to a, if your boyfriend no, asked. No, I no, I really don't. If he could say like, hey, you know what? This is a little bit too much skin for the whole world to see. What do you think about taking it down? I'd be like, you know what? Yes, but you know, you have to. Remember that goes both ways, mm. but then again, like Does, I'd be it like, though. but here's the thing. I'm gonna be honest. Like, if my man like looked really good with the shirt off, I'd be like, yo, let me post these. <laughs> like, mm. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I think, sure. where's your, what's your intention mm. with it? I would As say a guy? that. Uh, for both, for mm-hmm. both, like posting a certain picture. What's your intention? Is it a thirst trap? Is it just like, hey, here's me at the beach? Or I think that matters. Context matters. Mm-hmm. But I don't have any objections to taking things down. I care about this person more I care about the people on my Instagram feed. Hmm. So, okay, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Did you think I was gonna say no? I respect men, I love men, they're wonderful. No, but I do think it's different. Like, if a guy has like shirtless beach pics, I think that's a little different than a woman who has like bikini (laughs) pics. Really, why? Why? Because um, the atten- the level of attention that men and women receive is vastly different, and then the way that men and women flirt. But is that is her very fault? Different. Though? Like the attention she gets, is it? It's not. Well, I mean, if you're posting like that kind of content, then that's like double the standard. What do you mean? Like if the man does it, it's okay, and if the woman does it, if the woman does it, well, there's all kinds of double standards. Yeah, true. The man's not gonna get the attention though. He will from me. I think that should matter. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I think men talk about it a little bit publicly differently than women do. Like, mm. I think men look at women's Instagrams and they go and they talk about it with everyone yeah. and, and anyone. Whereas, like, women, we do go look. Of course we do. Like, we yeah. we look at men's and, like, oh, oh like, yeah. that guy looks that great. It looks so, so hot. We do do that kind of stuff. We just don't talk about it in the same way. About. Like, yes. many conversations. And I also think Agreed. what matters most here when it comes to a woman's Instagram and having her delete stuff is what was the intention behind posting it? Mm-hmm. I was just going through it my own. It doesn't matter yes. what the intention is. Oh. I think it kind of does. It's, it's, kind of, she it's may not be, fair, though, if you think about, like, if I post anything, there's going to be some weird dude that's like, oh, show this and that. It's like, okay, I don't control what's coming out of his mouth. Mm. I control what I'm doing. Well, okay, so look, when it comes to intention, yes, like perhaps intention does matter a little bit. Mm -hmm. However, the end result of what is ultimately out there, your your initial intention doesn't matter if the potential negative consequences or impact on your relationship are the same. Because your intention, like if those sorts of things are out there and it has a negative impact on the relationship in some way, then... Brian, do you want me to delete pictures off my Instagram? I mean, I'll we're do not it. dating. We're not dating. You you can do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> well, it's just interesting because you want having, me to. <laughs> I was we having. Were, oh, sorry. Well, uh, like I'm I'm kind of like not, I don't I don't really care all that much. Like guys have different views on this. Um, however, would it be my like leaning? Oh, hey, swordless. Merci beaucoup for the uh, 20 gifted memberships. It would be my slight preference for, for my girl to have like minimal social media presence, minimal. Uh, Does that mean you have to have a minimal social media presence? Well, this is what I do for work. <laughs> there's a difference. <laughs> is it though? Because it- No, but there's like a, a, a normal girl who has no intention of making money on social media is like, could very well be posting degenerate photos on Instagram. Are my photos degenerate? I'm not saying I'm not saying your photos are degenerate. I'm speaking hypothetically here, but like, if you're posting super revealing photos on Instagram, it's different. And also, you can go to my Instagram. Like, I'm not I'm not posting. Uh, you're not posting thirst straps. No. Maybe you should. I mean, I'm, that's not the type of person I am. But, but. Uh, I don't know where I was going with this. Did, did you have a question? There's a lot of questions here. No, the, the, the thing that I wanted to touch on was that it's different between men and women because, okay, women run passive game. 
Like women don't really approach men, mm -hmm. but they'll put themselves in positions where they could be approached by men. Mm -hmm. They won't DM a man, but they'll post pictures to lure him into DMing them via Instagram, social media. So men are salesmen, women are marketers. The difference is though, when you get into a relationship, there's an expectation that the guy stop being a salesman and like approaching mm. women. Mm. Okay. However, women were never approaching men to begin with. Women were marketing themselves. So women are continuously marketing themselves even when they're in a relationship. Mm. So that's kind of my qualm with it. Makes sense. You, a lot of people like don't have the capacity to see that nuanced distinction there. In a it's quite nuanced, but it go, oh, I think it just boils down to finding someone who shares the same values as you. It's like, yeah. you don't even have to go big picture, like, okay, this is what you want, then go for that. Yeah. No, but... I mean, yeah, we are talking about, like, it happening. <laughs> oh, hold on. Well, I'll come back. Brian can't post thirst traps because it would literally crash Instagram. <laughs> He's a whole effing Aww. snack jk much love bro very diverse panel the show keep up the good work yeah i think it's a really good panel tonight um no i just there's a, there's differences between men and women and so like you okay madison uh, oh it was a sneeze okay i thought you were, okay um like in a committed relationship a man should stop pitching and a woman should stop advertising fair mm. proposition that's fair no oh. yeah. i think that, i think that's very fair and especially like Super i mean fair. How do you guys feel about like your man or someone you're talking to, like fire emoji responding to girls' Instagram stories? Absolutely no, not. Oh, that was <laughs> no. a very, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think it depends on the intention as well. Yeah, Cause if you're, if you're, it's like fire. It's like, you're a your girl, bikini though. posts weren't that out there, but like if you're like, you, you ever see those OnlyFans models where like they're bikini and they're just tits are out? Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's kind of what we're not looking for. Yeah. Good times, good times. Okay, so, oh, we, okay, we did that. Hold on, we got some more notes here from everybody. Um, Nikki, you dated a guy from an old Nickelodeon show and he ended up being a huge racist, huh? Oh, yeah. Who, which, which show? Oh, please don't, it's gonna be, I can't. Just, just say it, just say it, just say it. Don't worry, no, there's Zoe like nobody watching the show. Oh, no. There's like two people watching right now. No, I can't do that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter why, but um, I have to- Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> no. <laughs> he was on the Nickelodeon show, wasn't he? No, I think that was Disney no, Channel. Was, was that, that was Disney? Disney Channel, yeah. yeah. That was Disney Channel. Uh, okay. uh, no, it wasn't him. I would absolutely say it if it was Shia LaBeouf. Um, okay. Anyway. Uh, so you don't want to share? I'm not going to share who it was. Okay. But yeah, I ended up meeting him and I was thinking, I'm like, why do you, you look so familiar. And he's like, oh, you know, he kind of just brushed it off. And I was like, oh, interesting. And then we're literally in the middle of like dinner. And I was like, Oh my god, it hit me like just so and I was like, oh my gosh, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, whatever Then as the date like progressed, he just started saying some very outlandish things um, I don't know if I can say yeah, let's, here. okay, we'll, we'll skip over that, okay <laughs> So um, yeah, never called him You back. also said Blocked. most petty thing deal breakers slightly irrational deal breakers that shouldn't be deal breakers But totally <laughs> are mine is anyone who likes country music immediate. No, oh. I don't like oh, country sad. music. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't it's too twangy Turn the lock Oops. and I don't know what that song is, but I don't like it it's a deal but, breaker but that shouldn't matter. Aren't that you much. like Christian conservative? Don't a lot of I know conservative people like country music. You don't music? like the try it in a small town. Try that in a small town. I'm from <laughs> California. I'm from Los Angeles. I don't do I don't do that. Okay. <laughs> but ironically enough, right. yeah, I do want someone who like knows how to survive like on a ranch or a farm or something. And I'm like, ah, oh, but I don't like country music. It's terribly ironic, and mm. the irony is not lost on me. Okay, <laughs> I, yeah, you know. Yeah, not ideal for me. Good times. Good times. Um, okay, so we have Claudia here. You said uh, you're are you're a doctor, correct? Yeah. But as in PhD, not med yeah, not, I'm not MD. Yeah, not an MD. Is it fair to is it fair to claim doctor? Yeah, is absolutely. It, is it, is it, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I've I've heard some differing some opinions on if it's <laughs> fair to claim doctor. Is that your title? Yes. Technically, have, PhD is. I have, a I I have two PhDs. Degree. I have two PhDs. I'm in neurology mm. and in, and in psych, clinical psychology. So uh, yeah, into the mic. Into the mic. And, and I have a uh, two PhDs in clinical psychology and neurology. So 
like i and i now um august 14th i'm gonna start um doing more neuro i'm gonna sure. be a neuropsychology so i like help rehabilitate you know people with tm like trauma brain injury and mapping out like the mris and seeing you know now i have to predict since i can't do talk therapy anymore i have to predict their program in order to have for them to have a better quality life so i absolutely mm -hmm. do the hard work so yes i claim myself as a doctor okay, yeah. okay so you work to <clears throat> that. yeah so you said you want to talk about the behavioral pattern on well, your show, your show, my show. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why all the women you choose are what we call avatars. What do you mean by that? Okay, so when I noticed is that... Um, you guys speak. Hold on, hold oh, on. Let me sorry, just stop the right show. Here. I need you directionally because you're like ducking behind oh, okay. the mic. I need you up on the mic like and I need you speaking directly straight into it. Go ahead. Okay, so... Um, so, well, some of the past shows, I've noticed that this, that you're become that this show, I saw some of the past shows and a lot of these women, I noticed that they, um, some of them are like, would cop, start copying what they said to each other yeah, that's true. and get, um, and the word is actually not triggered. It's actually reactive abuse. Like, so they well, would semantics. get semantics. Well, no, it's not semantics. It's it's an actual definition. So, and it's not your fault. It's that they get very angry. So they stop, you actually stop listening to each other. And that's something I noticed. And both of you guys are on defense. And so they literally stop listening to you guys and they're angry. And by this time, they're just saying and spinning things and like not listening to what you're trying to say or whatever other panelist is trying to say. So like literally there's actually no debate happening. And by this time, that's why they're walking out or they're, they're starting to get teary eyed or they're starting to rage. So it's what, pretty rare we have that. I mean, we yeah. had a couple people leave, like leave the show. Obviously like I'm, I'm attempting to, uh, you know, have debates with people, so. No, yeah, absolutely, but I, yeah, I've seen, no, and, and, I, and I understand that it's a show, but I, I've seen that, like, that some of the girls do get, you know, pushed into something that gets them very angry, they don't know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, no, no, totally. I'm, I'm sometimes abrasive no, no, in my delivery. No, no, absolutely, and that's but. what makes your show very successful, because honestly, I get really into it, too, but I see that, that, the more that they're pushed they're re they're getting they're get they're becoming very reactive to the show and what that's usually in a psychology term it's called um an an avatar because all of the girls start becoming um reactive just like they are like they are um not all well, of them I, but for the most part like if they're close enough to each other they all start reacting because they want to defend mm. the girl, the girl state, even if it doesn't even equalize to them or they didn't have that inspired idea before. Not always, but I mean, I, the, the thing that actually did, I did agree with you on is uh, like if one girl, like the first girl that answers mm. and if she answers the question a certain way, oftentimes what I have noticed is the like following girls will like cal like get in line behind what she said instead of actually voicing voicing their genuine uh, opinion or mm -hmm. thought on a topic so i have noticed that where it, whoever sits in that chair kind of sets can set the tone for the show and if like this person in the chair is like very you know kind of says something reasonable like so the net the following girls are not going to be so inclined to be genuine in their answer but uh, you said that you also, you dated comedians or actors or ve very wealthy men. Yeah. What's the wealthiest man you've ever, any billionaires? No, multi-millionaires. Multi-millionaires? Yes. His net worth's like around 600 million. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good, nothing to. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you said modern dating is a mess that, and you don't, I don't participate men do not know how to date and women are entitled um when you say men don't know how to date what do you mean um like they don't pay for the first date agree for the la yeah thing is that i'm starting to find it really hard to like find you men speaking to the mic dear. Uh, sorry sorry dude oh so sorry <laughs> i said the same thing sorry um yeah that i'm finding it hard for like men to like i like the traditional men so i feel like i'm more like I, I will say that like I'm more like a foreign woman that I prefer men to be 
more like for, like how foreign men treat foreign women. Sure. So, um, yeah, and like also I also think that some women feel very entitled and they bring absolutely nothing to the table and they expect a lot from men. I'm not saying like I'm just generalizing some women that I've like talked to and I've like been like, well, what are you bringing to the table? And they have absolutely nothing, like nothing. And I'm literally, and they want like a, a man who's literally like saying like, I want him to make a million, two million, three million. And literally like they like think that all they have to do is be, uh, be pretty, be young or be like, as, or bring her aesthetic hmm. and that's it and i believe that you have to have some in something special some intellect be a good mother be have a low body count i agree because i don't want even him to be like base chasing like young chasing like really basic young or not young let me take that word out so like some basic trashy women when i've taken care of myself i have a low body count and I have invested so much into my education for him to be like choosing just any trashy woman. And yeah, well, I'm not I mean, going to date that. So I mean, not to bring this up again, we already talked about this, but I mean, you mentioned your education. Your educational achievements are not really going to make you more attractive to a, a male partner. Okay, but also I... It's fantastic. Really, no, Good no, for you. I agree. But it doesn't make you more attractive. I know, but okay, as a that's person. fine. But I also have other stuff that I bring to the table because I know I'm going to be a good mother. Uh -huh. I know I'm going to be a good wife. I have a low body count for a reason. I have a, come from a good family. Sure. And, and I have a lot of other achievements that a lot of women don't have. So, like, that's... What, like what achievements? I have a book coming up. I, I have, but that doesn't, a, that I doesn't have my own make you. Show. That's fantastic, but it doesn't make you more attractive to a it man. It doesn't matter. I already but know. Okay, but I you're already you're know. You're talking about okay, this wait, stuff. Stop. Like, okay, no wait. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's true. Okay, let's take away my achievement. I already know the status that I can, the status of the men that I can date just from live experience. My brain already processes that, so it already knows, like what I can date, what I can't date. So okay, let me just from that sure. take, I already know if my attract, like I will consider myself a solid six. Sure. So, oh, we should do that. We got to do, do the rating yeah, here. So, but with whatever reason, this can take me here. So that's what I'm saying. Even if I'm not like a, like a 10, I already know what I can date. So that's from where I go based on. Even without any of my achievements, but I don't want somebody who <laughs> is so non-selective that, that they will great. literally date anybody. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Here's the thing, though. When it comes to the achievements and the education and stuff, that's fantastic for you uh, on an individual level, but I, I don't think you should cite those things as things that will make you more attractive to a male partner. Let me just finish. Now... That would be like me telling all the girls here, like back in 2019 when World of Warcraft Classic came out, I leveled four characters <laughs> to 60. <laughs> I had four level 60s in World of Warcraft. I had a 60 rogue, uh, a 60 undead rogue, a 60 orc warrior, a 60 warlock, undead warlock, and a 60 undead mage. Now on my rogue, I got Perdition's Blade. I had some decent gear on my rogue, on my warrior. Um, I got uh, death. Is it Deathbringer from from Anix Anixia? I believe it's Deathbringer. Um, you know, I was in the top raiding guild. We were speed running molten core, BWL. Like we were, we were monopolizing the world bosses. Azergos, Lord Kazik. Uh, let, let me see what else. Oh, when when the nightmare dragons came out, the emerald dragons. We were getting all the dragons too, and they spawned four at a time. So like. We were on. We were dominant on my World of Warcraft PV. It was a PVP server too. We had a bunch of rank 14s. <laughs> that okay. What I just said illustrates what like when you're words? talking about your <laughs> achievements okay. and your education. Okay. Like, <laughs> let me say something else. Okay. Women don't care about my World of Warcraft <laughs> achievements <laughs> okay. so let me in the same way that men don't care okay, wait. about. <laughs> okay. In order for me to like have been like to be like uh uh. To Get on Telemundo, like Despierta America, which is a huge show, 
which is a huge show. We, you men have don't to care be, about wait, your status me either. Say, men wait, don't care about your status me either. Let me be, I had what to audition five times, and it's really hard to be a Spanish TV. And mind you, I was four years old. I believe old. it. And you have it's to be, hard. they put you in really tiny dresses. Men don't care about that. Wait, no, you have to be a certain level of attractiveness to be on a Spanish TV show because they That's like great. the girls with like, in Miami, in Miami where like, there's like a lot of girls so that are extremely beautiful. I had to audition five times. So that also takes me to another level of like being like, I am this. So if you men don't care if you've been on Telemundo. Some men do. Clearly. Okay, well that's for you, Brian, but other guys well, I do a, want I, to know. I'm not saying I agree with her by any means, but I do have a question. Sure. Do you think Tom Brady cares? Oh, about his like what like the, like his ex-wife was a model you know what i mean like do you, in terms of like being beautiful and being on certain things like covers of magazines like a lot of like really really successful men they partner with like the most attractive successful women well, and i think it well, reflects that's, them. yeah I, yeah that's a that's a part of it that's because when you move in that those sorts of circles hold on. 93 donated 99 dollars sorry to cut off the party mickey I'm 30 and fun and Nikki, you are the fire today. Just left biotech. Proud simp for you. You to the little boys in the chats hating. I'll DM you on Nick. Your big is fire and I brag if that was my GF's page. Brian, BLM, BLM, BLM. Based. Um, you seem very beautiful. Okay, there you. Would this be the first whatever marriage? Oh, I know, right? Marriage. Whatever marriage. Do you love Jesus we need to or wrap no? up pretty soon. Uh, we do need to wrap up pretty soon. Okay. Um, but uh, we'll go for a few more minutes, um, which probably will turn out to be a little more because I do need to finish up a couple things before we wrap. Um, you were asking me something. I, I, this is not my opinion by any means. I'm literally oh, just like to, okay, Tom Brady, that Giselle. Devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, when you're like moving in those sorts of circles, mm -hmm. you're going to be meeting both men and women that are of a certain status. Yeah. So, but I mean, it's plausible. Would have Tom Brady still gone for her had she, same beauty, but without the, the modeling and stuff, accolades? Yeah. And she's the same person as she was. Yeah. I assume so. I mean, same with like, like Leonardo DiCaprio. It's like always high status models. Oh my God, AB check. Thank you for the 50, man. Appreciate it. Uh, that actually triggers a fit check. So what we're going to have everybody do, we're going to do a little fit, fit check. check. You can tell us, you know, if you're wearing Gucci or Prada or what, whatever that thing is. She wins the That's fit check for the, yeah, the prize. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's yeah, the most gorgeous are you outfit. Jap are you Japanese? I'm Asian. Wow, that is <laughs> cultural. <laughs> is it though? Is it? Well, it was gifted Asian? to Kimono's me by a Japanese, Japanese person. Exactly. It was gifted to me by a Japanese person to be worn as aesthetically as I wanted Is to. Is it cultural appropriate? I mean, but you're not Japanese, so... It's not cultural appropriation. It's not. Who started clothes, then we're all appropriating. Also, this though. like fixation on cultural appropriation is pretty much existent in the West. But come back to Southeast Asia. We would love to see you in traditional barong, which is a traditional yeah. um, men's co costume. So it's oh, a different yeah. perspective oh, there. I, I just point of clarification uh this cultural appropriation term is a joke i think uh I agree but with you. but uh okay let's do a stand up let's do a little fit check everybody so i'm wearing like my show po like a show pony <laughs> well whoops uh if everyone can just stand up and show their fit um all right there we go we got the the fit going here okay the kimono all right okay yeah, culturally appropriating sure. madison Gorgeous what about you got Madison here. Um, Love right. it. <laughs> All right, she's got, I don't know what you call those. Those are Chinos. some no. genie pants or something. Um, is genie that what they're called? Genie pants? Genie pants? Yeah, I think so. They're classy. All right, thank you, everybody. You can sit down. All right, there you go. Thank you. Uh, was that AB check? Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, Tom Brady, Giselle. I mean, it's, you know, you know, I don't know where we were at with that one. Did you have well, further I mean, follow-up? or? I mean, like, like I said, it's not my opinion. I'm just literally seeking to understand the full breadth of your statement that men don't care. Like, I think I think some men care, like where their woman is at. Like, I don't see Tom Brady dating a regular normal girl with no status, no fame, no yep. money. Well, I mean, he also just got divorced. So there's from that. a supermodel that was famous before Who? they got together. 
Well, that's another reason not to get married. Look at all these hyper successful, attractive <laughs> exactly. men. Exactly. Who are getting divorced. Yeah. So if they can't keep a girl, what makes you think you can? Um, <laughs> Either one who trail for divorce. <laughs> can't argue with that. So uh, let's see. Um, we have something from Sai. Sai, is that how you say your name? Yes. Sai. You said dating with a checklist. What did you mean by that? Oh, it's to a topic that. I wanted to like open up. Like, do you guys date with a checklist? What's your checklist? In mind? Wait, what? Like do you guys date lines. with a checklist in mind? Do do got as do men? you do you do, do, do the we? Table. Yes, do yeah. Well, let's start with you. <laughs> do you have a checklist? I have an idea, not necessarily a checklist. Okay, let's start with physical traits, and then let's talk about personality. Not so much physical traits, more on intellect. Intellect. Okay. That that's it. He just has to be smart, mm-hmm. but he can be. Can he be obese? <laughs> If you are smart, then in a way, you care chaser. about it's yourself. It's okay, I get it. Wait, what? If you are smart and you're self-aware, then obviously there's a part of you that cares about yourself, your health. That's not true. <laughs> so is he it looks not? Good? Well, <laughs> is it not if you're self-aware? <laughs> self-aware that no. something is wrong? Well, there's, there's different kinds of intellect, right? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like intellect more towards self-awareness. Right? Are you trying to improve yourself? But I'm sure there's people with high IQs or who are very smart who are not. Yeah, that's why I'm specifying the kind of intellect I'm looking for. So, okay. So someone who's smart Enough and to in look good, good health. In a self-aware <laughs> mode. Because yeah. I was thinking like Christopher Hitchens was a very intelligent guy, but he was not a particularly healthy individual. But um, so that's it just smart and in Mostly, good shape. I, that, that's why I said it's an idea because I was asking you be. guys. Tall. I'm pretty short. It doesn't really matter. You're, are you she's five feet? Five. She's five. I'm five flat. Are you sure you're not four eleven and three quarters? I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Don't worry about that. All right. Well, can, Nick, can you get a tape measure? Um, <laughs> no, sure. No, I'm, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> what else? Any physical traits? Not so much, honestly. What about dad bod? Are you cool with dad bod? Uh, it doesn't matter, honestly. What? I can get behind dad bod. Yeah. Okay. Um, so checklist, do you guys have a checklist? Um, yeah. As I think as long as they're, um, they, they're smart and they're kind. I really like kind people. Kind people. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want a complete package. I want a complete package. I want them to look good. Um, I want them, their height, I want them to be minimum six feet six foot tall. I want them to be very intelligent, emotionally intelligent. I want them to be very kind. Wait, they um, have to be six feet? Six foot, at least. At least. Yes. How tall are you? Five, six. But I wear high heels all, like mm-hmm. most of the mm-hmm. time. So, and then my high heels are like, like crazy. So, and then I sure. don't want to feel taller. <laughs> okay. So I cannot like uh, settle with my high heels. I'm six feet minimum? That's like only 50 per, 15% of men are over six feet. I know. You're kind of limiting your pool. I know. Uh, what if the guy is otherwise a great guy? He's just 5'10". I, I just don't know. I think maybe because my character is a little bit aggressive and dominant, and then if they're oh. shorter, and mm-hmm. then I feel like mm-hmm. I'm dominating him completely, so that's why... So you need why. an extra dominant guy yeah. because you're kind of in your, you're more masculine. Mm. Or you're dominant yourself, so you need a... You need a guy yeah, to almost a guy. overcompensate yeah, yeah, yeah. in a way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, where were we? Did you answer? I don't know. I answered. I don't really have a checklist right now. I'm I'm just being open minded. Stop the cap. It's, I really <laughs> seriously though. Really, I, I really don't have a checklist right now. We were actually talking about this in the car on the way here that I'm kind of in a place right now where I'm starting to figure out what I want because I don't know right now. Okay. So what is that? I'm done. That's it. That's. It. that's it. <laughs> Should oh. we keep going around the table? Oh, Checklist. me? Um, not really. I just really look for compatibility, like attraction, obviously. And it'd be nice if he's like, like better than me. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Uh, for me, not really. I think my checklist has also changed throughout time. When I was young, I was definitely a lot more ignorant. And I don't think there was a checklist. Um, there probably would be now if I was in kind of the dating world, um, but I am not. And if I were to be, I think the number one thing definitely would be faith, um, a man of faith, because I think that opens up a lot more 
realms that are important to me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, definitely. He has to love Jesus. Um, and that'll, that'll usually, you'll be a certain type of person. So someone who's honest, mm-hmm. loyal, who values commitment, and who also wants a family. Um, I need him to be smarter than me. Um, just very into being able to think critically and not just kind of blindly go with whatever is in front of him. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'd like a tall guy. That'd be great. I kind of want him to be in shape. I try to be in Do you guys shape. hear that thumping? Is that one of you guys? Oh, can you, yeah, guys, can you minute. stop thumping, please? Um, but yeah, no, I mean, physically, um, it's not, I had a really big crush on Prince Eric when I was a kid, but now I'm like, okay, he doesn't have to be dark hair and blue eyes anymore. As long as I find you attractive, like, that's totally fine. But someone who's, like, athletic, I can't have you just kind of be lazy and not work out, because I want to do that for the rest of our lives. So, someone who takes care of himself. Checklist? Yeah, somebody that's nice, sweet, funny, traditional values. Somebody that's old school like me. I gotta say that. Old Only school. some real descriptions. Nice. Old school. I like old school. All right, I've I've got a checklist. I've written it down. <laughs> for you, so. Eighteen to twenty-five. No, that's not. I, my eighteen to forty-five. How about that? Um, dark hair. Keep in mind, these, are, these aren't, these are there's like deal breaker, deal maker, slight preference, strong preference. So mm-hmm. I'm not gonna, but sl- I'd say slight preference for dark hair, slight preference, light eyes, but don't really, like it's not like, oh, I've got, like I date women with dark eyes. Um, prefer, probably a m- moderate pref, moderate, medium preference for short, the shorter the better. Uh, large labia, the bigger the better. Soft spoken, <laughs> a little shy, a little introverted. Um, Let's see, uh, soft, calming voice. Uh, her, her parents made her do at least three years of violin or cello. That's important. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I want peace. Don't want like a really combative woman. Um, little, or, little or no makeup, pref- pretty strong preference for no plastic surgery. Um, let's see. Uh, um, 19. Pleasant. No, I mean, like I said, I date women around my age. I date, date a bit older. Um, yeah. That's a cute list, What if she actually. plays the guitar like instead of the cello? Wait, what's that? I said that's a cute list. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of joking about the violin or cello thing, but... <laughs> that, yeah. Um, and uh, low body count is, would be good. Do and you offer a low body count? Do I offer a low body count? I don't reveal my body count. So why should she then? What do you mean? Like if that's what you're looking for, but like, are you gonna tell her? Would I, yeah, I would privately, if she asked, I would tell her what my body count is. But I don't think as a guy, if you have a high body count that you can only date women who have high body counts. I don't think it makes you a hypocrite. It, It would make you a hypocrite if you were to say, Women shouldn't have high body counts, but you contribute yourself to, have, <laughs> yeah, to giving women a high body count. Although, well, can a guy contribute to a woman having a high body count? Because... Who else are they going to Well, <laughs> else they gonna sort do of, <laughs> sort of, but like as a guy on an individual level, you're only one body. So, you know, you know what I mean? Now, as a guy, I think if you like play with a girl who is desirous of a long-term relationship and you like f- feign that you want something serious when really your intentions are to just sleep with her and then ghost her, then that's contri- I would say that could contribute to another body a lot. But uh, I don't think men should do that. Um, because I'm well, me personally, I have no interest in one night stands or sleeping with somebody once. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think there's a double standard because I don't think. I don't think, in order for you to desire something in a partner, that you yourself need to possess it. Mm-hmm. Isn't that kind of hypocritical, though? I don't think it's hypocritical because there's. I think that's just normal. So it's normal for guys to sleep around. And you got to speak into the mic, guys. So it's normal for guys to sleep around and then kind of require. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's normal. 
I do think there's differences when it comes to body count. I think men typically tend to care about it more, and I think women typically tend to care about it less. I'm perfectly, if a woman wants to date a guy who's a virgin, more power to you. That's, totally, that's a totally fine preference for a woman to have. I happen to think it's the case, though, that women don't have a strong preference for dating men who are virgins, like women who have mm. previous sexual partners. I don't think that's a very strong preference for women. Because I think. Not. But now, I guess who's more likely religious, to. A religious like, woman might be inclined to, to do that. Mm. But, like, for example, you don't need to possess a trait to find it desirable in a partner. For example, a woman who is broke could be attracted to a guy who's rich. Need she also make as much money as him to be attracted to him because of his wealth? I don't think so. I think that's just normal. Same with humor. A woman need not be funny to be attracted to a guy who's funny. Hmm. I'm not saying women can't be funny, but what I'm saying is <laughs> there are plenty of women out there who probably aren't funny. Like, I would say if you ask, I, I, if you ask every single woman, would you like a guy who's funny? Every single woman's going to say, yes, I'd like a guy yeah. who's funny. I think a lot of people look for Are qualities they funny themselves? in other Probably not. people that they don't have themselves, mm. too. Like, there's a lot of people that do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I agree with that. Well, and I yeah. think it also comes down to instinct, too, because one of the things that you're bringing up is also innate in men generally is that they don't want to be with a woman who has slept around. And it's not necessarily a rational fear, but it is in, like, all animals. That's, like, why when a male lion takes over a pride, he will often kill the young cubs of mm -hmm. the other pride because men have kind of innate in them a fear of a woman bearing the child of another man. Yeah. Yes, innate competition. And so that's one of the things that you're touching on is it may not matter as much to women, but it does matter to men, and there is a reason for that. It's kind of in their nature to some extent. Yeah, I mean, the, the, when it comes to body count, there's just another biological factor, and that comes down to paternity uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Yes. So a woman who's had a lot of sexual partners, and this is like on a, this is not always necessarily on a, uh, a conscious cognitive, cognitive level, but a woman who's promiscuous, uh, at least previously, before the advent of birth control, a woman who is promiscuous, and let's say she gets pregnant, there's no way to guarantee who the father is. Mm -hmm. Paternity testing is something that came about in the 1980s, so back in the day, like, okay, let's say a woman has 10 husbands, who's, and they're all sleeping with her, who's the father? prior to paternity testing, you don't know. Whereas if a woman gets pregnant, she knows, if a woman has 10, or excuse me, if a man has 10 wives and they're loyal to him, you know who the father is. Or sorry, excuse me, the women know, hold on. I'm losing I feel my like your argument's like collapsing no, no, no. in on itself a little bit. I'm like, wait, I'm like, wait, wait let it finish, let it finish. No, no, no. I got, I got tongue tied. So, okay, a woman who has 10 husbands, right? Okay. You don't know who the father is. Mm -hmm. But a man who has 10 wives, and of course, assuming that the 10 wives are all loyal to him, you know who the father is mm -hmm. in all instances. You know who the mother is, mm -hmm. of course. The woman always knows who the mother is because you birthed the child. But men don't have that same just immediate knowledge yes. i don't want a man with 10 baby to, like baby mamas i'm gonna be honest i don't want that yeah like, sure the but, same kind but of the, the difference is is that as a guy there there's never going to be a question as to like since women are the ones that give birth there's never going to be an uncertainty about maternity there's no such thing about mm -hmm. there's no such thing as maternity uncertainty but for men it's a very genuine fear that they could potentially be raising a child that they think is theirs that's not that's pretty much the biggest L that a guy can take in his life is to raise a kid that you think is yours that's not. Yes. Because it not no, only, I understand that. Yeah, it's, that's, like it's not great. Cucked. I guess I'm, I'm feeling... No, it's really bad. Pretty, it's no, really I bad. I understand that. I guess I'm coming at, like from the opposite perspective of like, I would feel really crappy if my husband said he was at work and he has a whole second family. Totally. It's like, sure, wait, you committed to me. Like, wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. You have all of it. Like, I was listening to Usher on the way here and he's, I was listening to Confessions 1 and 2 and I'm like, if this, if my man made a song like this, like, you're so important to me, but I got my side chick pregnant. Sorry, she's keeping it. Like, wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. Sure. And it's the same, the same idea of like, you want, you want your person to be committed to you. And I think that should go both sure. ways. Should yeah. go both ways, you know? Don't sure. sleep around. It's not great for you. Sure. And, and certainly that could be a fear for women because there's certain financial ramifications if your husband has 
it's like a respect thing. Yeah. Another, <laughs> well, I don't know what the term <laughs> has has kids with another woman because then his resources might be diverted and cannot be solely focused on. And I'm kind of coming at this from an evolutionary perspective, the survival of your family. Mm. However, it's different. Like that. That's a little different than like paternity fraud, where this man who potentially you're like you're fucking with his ability to um like he thinks he's propagated his bloodline but like mm. that's not his kid totally so it's that's so that's wrong like when a, women do that it's so wrong Are you, same what, with is like, it, what does the sleeping around mean sleeping like, around yeah yeah what does that mean like how oh. many it will call like oh, oh like what's around? a high body count yeah what is it it depends but on I her think, age yeah it depends on how old you are mm. yeah so I don't know, somebody my age, 30, 40. Well, speaking of that, should we, let's go around the table. What's everyone's body count? Uh, not answering you're, you're that. Not, I'm like, not, I'm not answering that. About. I mean, well, yeah, you just brought it up. So, so wait. we haven't even rated ourselves yet. Yeah, we got to do oh, that. We got to rate ourselves. We got to do that, and we're going to wrap. We're going to wrap t- 10 minutes. We're going to wrap in 10 minutes. No. I'm not going to talk crossed. about what is my body yeah, count. Yeah, you go first, I'm Brian. You go about. first. You go first. <laughs> we'll start with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to talk, I'm going to say, until I was 32 years old, I was only slept with one man in my life. So that's, that was my life. Until you were 32. Yep. But you're now 42. Two. So a lot can happen in a decade. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So what does this sleeping around mean? If you're dating someone once a year, is that sleeping around? Is that if you're dating someone once every two years, is that sleeping around? What does sleeping around mean? Like sleeping around with just banging be, someone uh, new yeah. every weekend like, like either either there being very short durations between sexual partners or sleeping with multiple people at the same time okay. so sleeping around like if I, I would say if you're you have one new sexual partner i mean e- even less than this but let's say one new sexual partner a week i would say that's sleeping around hmm. also if you have one person that you're sleeping with and you're sleeping with other people that i would say that's sleeping around hmm. so yeah even if there's not crossover or there's not overlap, mm. like you sleep with one guy for one week and then another guy for another week, even if there's no overlap, you can still be sleeping around. I typically tend to think of it though, if there is some overlap, that's more so. Okay. Body count? I don't know, I don't sit and count them. Plus 10, but plus 20. I, I, Wait, I, can, we stop, I, can we stop thumping on the... Oh, yes, 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 yeah, sorry. My downstairs. I, I, I date between one. one to two people per year. Sometimes one to two okay. per sure. every two three years. Okay. I only sleep with my serious boyfriends. I've had three, so three. Stop the cow. <laughs> okay. You're a hoe if you answer the question. You're a hoe if you don't answer the question. So I'm not going to answer. That's not it. true. Just not true. You can answer. Yeah. It. No judgment. This is a safe. What's it called? The fuck safe yeah. space. Safe space. The safe, chat's safe not. Space. Nope. Ignore, <laughs> I pass. Yeah, ignore the chat. Nobody's safe serious. Skip. Nope. Forget what I said about No matter what I do, I'm going to get called a barracks bunny, even though I'm not and never have been. Uh, plus 10 or I'm not 10. answering. What about you? I've only been in monogamous relationships, and I've never had one night stands. So that's, that's it. You've only what? I've only been in monogamous relationships, and I've never had one never night had stands. Never had a one night stand. Okay. Seven? <laughs> not saying. Oh, okay. That's fine. What about you? Uh, three billion. Um, just kidding. That's private. <laughs> so. Three billion. <laughs> <laughs> um well i think my parents are watching so i'm gonna say over five under 15 just to be super careful sure that's fair yeah, Range thanks is pass my dad's watching <laughs> there you have it ladies and gentlemen i don't answer that question yeah. yet, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, all right there you have it there you have it we do have something here from mr stifler ask everyone to rate their looks on a scale of one to ten we'll go around the table oh, on this go ahead Ten. Oh, into the mic, please. Ten. Six. I don't know if the camera was on you. Hold one more time. Ten. Six. Yeah, I'd say six. Is it for the fit or like your physical appearance? Looks on the scale of one. Uh, I don't know. Who am I comparing it with, though? Just your own self-assessment of your own. Yeah. However, you that. It's hard because I would not go there. So I go there. No answer. You can go there. Go there. I don't I, want to. Uh, Sai, you can go there. I don't have to. So. You, you don't have to. 
I don't want to. But you could. Go yeah, there. I I don't want to. You could go there. I don't want but, to. But you you could. <laughs> I already said no. Why is it being pushed when I already said no? So, but you okay? So you don't want to rate yourself? No. So are you a ten? How do you f- how do you feel about yourself? I think I feel most happy about, as myself. I think the thing is most about how no, you rate yeah, yourself. No, yeah, exactly. So yourself. I feel happy. That's why I don't need. I don't have the need to answer this. Mm. Like you, you have to Say give me a parameter, happy. like to compare myself with. Then I'm gonna answer. Oh, if I give it, so if I pull sure. up a photo of a girl, you will or make a compare. Okay. Actually, hold on. I take nope. that back. No, nope. you you <laughs> cannot rescind your. I could. You cannot. Why, res- why not? Why not? I could. Oh my, really, don't, I could retract not, it. It's yeah. Not that heavy I could say relax. no. Of course, <laughs> yeah. you can do whatever you want. Yep. Um, Kristen Kruick. Do you I know who that, that is? is. Okay, all right, mm-hmm. Whatever. We'll move on. What about you? Um, I'm not really sure. Um, maybe 6.5 or 7. Um, I would say probably a 7 or an 8. There's always room for improvement. Um, but I think I'm working on myself, doing a good job. Solid 7.8. <laughs> 7. Eight. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, she said 8. She said 8. Uh, I give myself a 6. Maybe 6.9 on a good day. Uh, I'll just say this. There's no 10s at the table. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I'm sorry. But I think <laughs> I, it's, it's not about how you're going to judge me. It's about how I'm going to feel about myself. And like even the whole world is going to come and tell me, oh, I think you're this. But it's about how I feel about myself. So I'm going to base it on that. Because if I sit here, I'm going to wait to see, oh, you say you said I'm five. You said I'm four. You said I'm three. I'm on a seven. Then who am I? So I'm waiting here to judge me. So like... I think I'm not going to wait and see who's going to judge me. Okay. All right. We, I mean, the, the whole ratings scale, though, it's not so much about, like, you can claim to be a, like, for example, I could claim to be a billionaire, but if my assets don't reflect that I'm a billionaire, I'm not, so there need, there's some basis in reality. But you don't even know me. How, how can you tell me if I'm a 10 well, it's or not about, It's not your personality. The question is specifically okay. looks. So I mean, well, I'm looking at you asked, right now. She and then you said like in general. It's just a, it's just a little right. question. That's, yeah. For the sake of time, I need yeah, to maybe. move on from that. But uh, we have Alex P here. Unless she has her cab, she's a veteran of foreign war, not a combat veteran. The cab is a is a badge um, that some uh, get provided uh, when they've been in Oops, a, an exchange of fire or yep. uh, some kind of uh, combat me. action. Bad, and Nick. listen, the the attack on me because I'm a military veteran, I just have this to say, listen, I've never understood why somebody else in the military would dog or down put anybody else in the military. Like if you were in the military period, I'm proud of you no matter what you did or no matter what your career is, whoever's commenting these things, I don't know my career. And um, things, I'm really proud of my military service. I got a lot out of it. I gave a lot. And uh, if you were in the military, I love you and I love your service and I appreciate you and I'm not going to fight with you. All right, Alex P, there you have it. Uh, to, Mic drop. Yeah, just to finish reading, he said, we can trash veterans if we are vets. We have the card. It's clear that the way Bender the Offender has communicated that he is probably a veteran for HR in the Army is still HR. It wasn't my only job, but I love HR. And even if you were in the military doing HR or mailroom or whatever, I'm proud of you. There you have it. Okay, we have Matthew mm-hmm. Saturn. Hey, as a rancher in Texas noted, LOL, the reason I asked is because men and women treat money very differently in a relationship, i.e. women own most of the debt in the States, the richest man of Babylon. Wealth grows wherever men exert energy. Okay, Matthew Saturn, thank you for your very generous super chat. Buffy Vegas, Brian on my contact ASAP. I have 57 million views. Would like to talk with you, bro. You're, you, my, the DMs, bro, the DMs. This is true, the girl from Rocky IV, I'm five foot eight. I'm here to tell you that led many men and I've made many men rich. It ain't the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. <laughs> P.S. You're too old, too choosy. Oh, Thank okay. you. All right, there you have it. Wow, they're, <laughs> they're out for blood tonight, guys. Okay, uh, then we have a chat here from JT. Nikki, I'm 30 and fun employed right now. Might apply to med school next year, not positive yet. If that was my girlfriend's IG, I'd show that off to my boys in the heartbeat. <laughs> JT, don't uh, don't take <laughs> anything down to the chat. Yes, I'm shamelessly a simp. Grow some balls, BLM. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I was about to say it's kind of simpy, bro. Come on, bro, come on. 
show, me you'd show my off life your girl simping? to your boys? I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> I believe in being discreet. With like, I'm not gonna show my male friends. Look at my girlfriend. I don't know. That's kind of. She's totally real. She goes to another at, school. Check out my girlfriend. Uh, it's just, I don't know. All right, but hey, teach their own. JT, appreciate your patronage. All right, we have Raven. It doesn't t- take skill to get on Telemundo. Ooh, it does take skill to have all of the world bosses on rotational farm status on the PvP server. Just saying. <laughs> What's up? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> what are those words? I don't know what a PvP is. We had them on player farm. versus player. Yeah. It's a PvP. Oh, player okay. versus player. Yeah, yeah, of course, oh. of course. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, that thing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Like PvP. Sure. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, that's it for the chats here. Let me get a couple last. Oh my God. Okay. Let me get a few more things, and then we're gonna wrap. So. Aubrey, you had a story about you cheated on your high school boyfriend for five years. Why don't you tell us that story? Uh, uh, Give us a plot synopsis on that. Oh my gosh. Well, yes, this was, I graduated high school in 2016. We had been dating since we were in middle school Um, and then all the way throughout high school. Um, That's why I kind of stuttered when you asked if it was my longest relationship because I actually think that one was a little longer. Um, But yeah, anyways, we were each other's first in pretty much everything. Um, He did finagle with another girl um, in a brief moment when our parents made us break up. Um, And I think I always kind of just held that jealousy in my heart quite a bit. I was just really young and really immature. Um, So we did, um, like I said, we were each other's first. Um, He was mine and everything. And um, anyways, I was just kind of being pursued um, by this guy in high school who was uh, a virgin. And he was like the only virgin in our high school at the time. And uh, the girls really liked that. A lot of girls were really into this guy. And he just had it out for me for whatever reason. He despised my boyfriend. um, And I used to vent to him quite a lot when I was really young. And um, to this guy who was a virgin because he was my friend. And uh, anyways, he just kind of pursued me to the point where ultimately I was just kind of put in a pretty weird situation right before I went off to college. And ultimately I decided he point blank looked at me and told me that if I went to college without ever hooking up with him um, that I would completely regret it and I was 18 and super vulnerable and I was like all right I guess I will Um, so we did and I felt an extreme amount of shame uh, for about a week or so and after that I actually told him I told my boyfriend that I cheated on him right before we were about to move out to Hawaii together to go to school and um, he ultimately drove away, said F Hello. you, <laughs> and a lot of other nasty words. And um, that is the very summarized version. Loose pussy energy Jesus. donated 99. <laughs> Ryan, your tolerance for these bad faith. 304 cappers is insane. They won't answer truthfully because they have have more bodies than the whole John Wick <laughs> franchise, especially the one in back. L for all the ladies for wasting our time. Stop capping. Who's the one in the back? Is it Kiki? Kiki? Uh-huh. Uh, um, by the way, LPE, that's the equivalent of like small dick energy. Mm. It's like the, mm. you know, big dick energy. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. did you, did you wrap well, I did just story? see one comment. I did want to say that I know that I did say vulnerable, and I totally do take responsibility for what happened. I was just saying I was vulnerable because I was talking about how I was young, but I do completely take responsibility. That is why I ultimately told him because I was, you know, at a at a point mature enough to realize, okay, I'm maybe going to marry this guy one day, and to sit here and and commit vows to this man who I haven't been faithful to when he's been faithful to me, um, made me feel really bad about myself. And so ultimately, I knew that I, there was a chance I could lose the relationship, or there was a chance he could maybe forgive me, um, and he didn't. And we have not been together since. So yeah, that's kind of my thing. Okay. All right. That um, forgiveness. Yeah, totally. I, I definitely stay proud of you. Yeah, I Learned definitely your don't stand by once, once a cheater, cheater always a cheater. cheater. <laughs> I think that's so silly. And anytime people say it, I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, come on. You're and baby. and just all like, the people no. in high school were cheating on each other anyways. I just had enough, you know, yeah. womanhood to tell them that I actually did it. Yeah, you're I'm, allowed to. That's just <laughs> kind yeah, of you're non sequitur. I just want, you know, in case anybody's watching, I would like to point out, you know, this is a very busy thoroughfare. There are even at all hours of the night, there are loud, as you just heard. No there's, a, there's a motorcycle that just passed by. You know, 
Yeah, I'm just saying. Just saying. Okay, all right. Um, did you wrap up on your thing? Yeah, I, 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 and basically he ended up taking it to Twitter, and I was from a oh. very small town. Oh, so you got exposed no. publicly. Wow. Oh, yeah, very, very exposed. Um, yeah, to like a whole nother level, to the point where it's still to this day, like people call me out about it. No, it doesn't hurt at all anymore, they to be honest with you. about it? Oh, yeah. Why are yeah, they still hung up on that? that? That's I couldn't insane. Tell you. I really couldn't tell they you. No um, but the guy I cheated on my high school boyfriend with, he was still getting called out years later. I haven't really talked to him either. I'd be curious to know if it still goes on. Um, oh, hold on. Chterp93 donated $99. Okay, I have to redeem myself. I had no idea you'd be reading my $50 message from 40 minutes ago. Took a while. I thought it just went through unnoticed. To have it read out loud was so cringe and I'm mortified. Not actually simping, just trolling the little boys in the chat. The only way you can redeem yourself, JT, is to have us pop a champagne bottle. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Just saying, JT. Just saying. Wait, what? I can't need wait to, to like to... simp over someone. Oh yeah, dude, we're gonna wrap the show, bro. Um, to do something. Uh, okay, so um, before we wrap, any final thoughts from anybody? <laughs> Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. If anybody has any last-minute thoughts. Oh, so now I just had to share that story and get suckered at the end, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> we don't even get to pop champagne over it. I know. So, oh, Osai Akiwar. Oh, that's it. Was, I don't it was the assumption. <laughs> Akiwara's. It was. Money for you. Can you read this? Can you read this? Oh. Aikawara's kirei des. What is that? You're cute. Oh, okay. It's Japanese. Pretty kirei, yeah. Kirei des. But you're not Japanese. I'm not. Are you uh, Chinese? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Asian. No, I'm just. A- <laughs> no, I'm Filipino. Oh, Filipino. Oh, okay. Wanna, you speak uh, Tagalog. That. Tagalog. T- excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> it's at least I know that it's. Yes. The, you know, t- Tagalog? How Tagalog. Do okay. All right. Good times. Good times. All uh, right. So any final thoughts here before we wrap it up? Uh, me. Wrap it up box. Um, Go ahead. To the guy who made the Grimace joke about me, that was really funny. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, I want to see it now. Wait, what? <laughs> Is it, was it in the, like, a while back? Or? Yeah, a, a long while. Oh, my gosh. You okay, Madison? Doing okay. <laughs> we need to get Madison a uh, back massage here. But all right, so let me uh, let's see. I think there was one last thing. There was. Let everybody roast us. I do need to just thank our sponsor one more time. This stream is sponsored by Jackie Art of Roma Army Productions. Check out Jackie Art on all music streaming platforms. Check them out, guys. As I said, upcoming music artist from Canada, very talented, makes some great music, and of course, shout out to Chloe. Thank you, guys. Uh, be sh- and the link for that is in the uh, description. Uh, so, <clears throat> I'm trying, I feel like I had two more notes I really wanted to hit on really quick. Yeah. Um, oh, we need to react to your dating profile. Let's pull that up really quick. Um, and while he's, while Nick is getting that, wait, Sai, you've been single for six years? Yes. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, it's all good, it's all good. Uh, so, wait, okay, we'll come back to the single. It's for, okay, we'll come back to that. So this is Claudia. She so graciously, gener- uh, kindly provided her hinge prompts to us. Dating me is like dating diamonds. It's beautiful. I'm just just saying. Little, I applaud the oh, confidence. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, Edward, beautiful. This is the skin of a killer, Bella. I'm a killer. I have no idea what the fuck that means, but okay. <laughs> dating me is like dating diamonds. Let's look. Before, hold on. Hold on. So cringe. You wrote it. I know. <laughs> so it's a reference to Twilight because I think Twilight. A is Twilight funny. reference in yeah. a dating by. Yeah. Edward. Edward. Yeah. How old is Edward this reference? reference? Wait. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's let's see the next Years one. Old. Next one. Like, yeah. 2011 or before maybe be okay the way to win me over is be funny be romantic be direct i'm looking for a relationship not casual i don't get impressed so just be yourself yeah Uh, let's see the next one i go crazy for sweet kind smart gentlemen yes sir i'm real i'm brazilian polish mexican that is why 
I live in my swim. Okay. I think the other two That's are the more interesting apparently. ones. But yeah. wait, pull up the first one again real quick. Dating diamonds. Tell us about that. What? What do you mean diamonds? Are you a diamond? Um, in the rough? I, I think so. Yeah. Um, Into the mic, please. Um, yeah, I think I think I am. Um, I actually was doing it for the Twilight reference because I uh, think that it's I, I really liked the Twilight when I was younger. But then again, I just do think that um, you get like um, a whole package with me. I really do believe that. I'm not saying that I'm the most beautiful, most intelligent. I don't believe that about myself. But when you date me, um, I feel like you get a person that um, will bring you peace. I don't react a lot. I um, I feel like I know how to regulate my emotions, and I feel like I know how to, you know, calm myself. I feel like I have good conversation, and you know, my relationships so far have been really long for the most part. And if we've broken up, it's been you know because. I was pursuing my career. I put my career first, but now I'm in a good place. So, I mean, yeah, I do think that um, that that's what I bring to the table. And I am, you know, very loyal, very kind. And um, yeah, I think that that's the first things that I uh, put bring to the table. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Sai, you've been single for six years. <laughs> yes. um, but like, come on, there's been a guy in the picture in that six year time period, right? What does that mean? Like there's exactly maybe did you have a situation ship in the no, past six years? I really it's like if I want to be in a relationship then I'll be the, in a relationship. Oh what? Oh the <laughs> set. <laughs> the, the set. <laughs> I know. No, I was like, what? no 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 no. no. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's have. Can one of the girls just ever so just kind of push it? Wait, where's Madison? Wait, okay. Jesus Christ. I don't know if those gonna hurt. Wait, what's up, Madison? Bug like a giant moth. Well, wow. we'll see it next time. Um, oh, yeah, it is. Six years. Six years. Six years. Has there, there, come on, there's been some guy in the picture in six, six years. Six years of being single. I'm only really, when I am interested, it would only be for a monogamous relationship. When I get interested. When so you right get now interested. I'm not. I'm just chilling. Is it really that inconceivable? Because like no, life could be so busy. Like you're trying to do something. It's not it's not inconceivable but a six year period for nothing it's like, not nothing on, to maybe me maybe there was a guy who you dated for three months no. right? three months you, you could even if it was monogamous but it was just three months so it wasn't like no i girlfriend. i only go long term what do you mean you only go long term um you've never been with a guy and it only lasted like two or three months no it's always like two you're just to three that years. amazing no i'm just like i i thought you had a thyroid problem you would know how energy is so much of a, a thing. Yeah. So you can't just like energy, be yeah. willingly, uh, you know, like spending it, just casually spending it. Wait, so are you copping out because of the thyroid thing? Am I copping? No, I'm it's just like very out. selective of where I put my energy. And I think that's fair. Can I ask, because you don't have an interest in having children at all, is dating just not a priority I, to you in see, your life? See, the thing is, it's like, I don't even go there about the children part, but it's like, right now I'm doing something. I want to focus on that. Yeah, no, I'm just wondering, so are you full-fledged kind of just like focus on yourself? Like, I guess leave children completely out of it. That's just kind of a, a main portion of what I'm asking, though. It's, because that's not a priority but, to procreate, you don't necessarily need a man. So it's just, just not a priority in your life I to mean, date right now. And that's why you've been single for six years. See, the, the thing is, the idea of having kids is not even there. It's like, it's non-existent. So like, I don't know how else to put it. I'm just not interested to have kids. And that does not come into my dating profile or dating mind. Okay. Like once I get, once I want one, like a relationship relationship, then I'll do it. But I have time. Well, yeah, you can yeah. you can pursue relationships without the intention yeah. of having kids. Yeah, know, but I guess I was just curious if that had something to do with it. Mm. Have you just not found someone that's cool? I'm not looking. Oh, you're not. Look oh, yeah. so you don't really want a relationship? Or not right, right now. now. I okay. mean, that I'm makes sense. chill. Yeah. If it happens, it happens. It's like yeah. there's a way where you're open and you're also doing your own shit. Mm -hmm. so. so you're not closed. You're just not actively yeah. searching. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Wait, can you speak some? Tagalog for us? <laughs> Based. Okay, cool. What did you say? Did you just curse me I'm out? I'm sleepy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Rock and roll. Okay, there you have it, folks. We're going to wrap up the show. So, 
Uh, let me just double check. Oh, let's shout out Twitch really quick. Guys, go to twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow. Drop us a prime sub. If you have one, drop us a prime sub. Drop us a follow. If you have one, hey, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yo, Moonshine, thank you for the prime. Finny, thank you for the prime. Big, thank you for the prime. Oh, I think I already read these. Uh, 55, thank you for the tier three. Oh, tier three. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. You're awesome. Uh, okay, cool. So without further ado, wait, what do we, I swear we're forgetting something. No, no, no. I think, no, I th we got everything. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap up the show. Guys, last call. Please hit that like button on your way out. Thank you for tuning in tonight. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you were here with me. I appreciate that. Thank you to everyone who super chats, donates, and supports the show. Really means the world. Thank you to the panel. Thank you to all our chat mods. A uh, big thank you to Britt, who's helping with timestamps. Any women who want to be on the show, DM at whatever on Instagram. BD, under, BD underscore Atlas. If you have a large labia, uh, we, we, we be live. <laughs> we're, we're gonna be live uh, again Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Guys, we'll see you next time. 07's in the chat, 07's in the chat. Good night, guys, and we'll see you 